meeting come to order at 632. Do we have a quorum? That's kind of how we do it. Oh. Is there anyone here? Mary, that's mine. Thank you. Is there anyone here who wishes to participate in citizen participation? Hearing and seeing none. When we have item three, approval of minutes from September 21st and September 22nd. Do I have any motion so, or discussion? So, so, so move. Second. There is a, like, uh, I think there was a correction for the, which, I gotta find the right one. I have it right here in front of me. I think it was the last set of minutes. The big, the big set? The big set. That's it, the big set. It was just a, the word implement was misspelled. That was it. I, I don't know. That's <laughs> I should have went home. I should have ate dinner. I should have done all these things before I came here. I'd have been better prepared. Uh, I'll find it. You stay up all night reading these things, Larry? Here it is. It's on page eight. No, I don't stay up all night reading these things. Thank you very much. I go. Yeah, okay. But, I can't see, page eight, you look down. Mr. Camerano, yes, that sir. would be you. Yes, sir. Stated relative to revenue projections. Yada, yada, yada. Mr. McDonald, that would be me. Oh, stated see, the object. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Any other corrections? Yeah. Do we approve the minutes as produced and amended? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Department. Is your <coughs> I have an item that says School Department, August 2011 report. I was not aware that I was even supposed to be here, nor was I uh, aware that I was supposed to be giving a report. No sense of forewarning. Um, <laughs> I'm, happy, I'm happy to take questions. <laughs> Uh, the chairman is here at this moment. We are at item four. Report that was distributed at the school committee meeting the other day, and also give this to uh, Mr. Gray. Okay. And Mr. Gray is not particularly here. Uh, they came out of here, so I asked him to just whether he's on the agenda. No, he's not. Uh, I would recommend that next week when Mr. Gray is here, that you and if you have any questions directly to him. Mr. Gray is away. Stop. Should we give Mr. Sweat for warning on um, that we're going to put that off till next week? Uh, there's no requirement for him to be here. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, unless unless he's so I desired. Asked. That's he why I asked. Like I always try to be here and I'm happy to answer questions. Well, when we go through that, we'll go through Mr. Gray and then we'll go Mr. Sweat's here. Mr. Gray can answer questions. Mr. Sweat will be on the agenda next week. Uh, I don't think that's fair. <laughs> well, <laughs> the school committee reports will be there. Uh, okay. The not here. There are some reports to us. Uh, let me discuss further with Mr. Sweat as to whether or not they wish to make a presentation going forward. Uh, it, uh, it would be necessary. Next item on the agenda is Tom reports. Um, I get we don't have any reports that have been given by the Tom administrator. Although I am encouraged that the kind of meeting we had today, it appears that we may see something very shortly, although it may not be the audits. At least it may be the current year. We'll see. No promises. Tom Reed matters, uh, the Warren articles. Um, Mr. Your first up? Aye. <coughs> Your first up? Where do you want me? Up there, please. Facing the camera. Just on the camera. This is the camera. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Spurred along as I have it here, that's in front of you. Um, guy campaign from the Water Pollution Control. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm asking for hundred thousand dollars in capital funds. Um, I'm asking that it be transferred from restricted retained earnings and uh, move it into our, our, our repair and maintenance building for the purpose of replacing, <coughs> repairing um, ventilation equipment. And electrical components in the treatment in the waste in the uh, pump stations. I've given you a list of the pump stations. These are called general pump station evaluation. I highlighted the areas that we're going to take care of, and they all deal with electrical, electrical boxes, electrical panels that are rotten. There's also five photos you could follow them that it speaks to the actual conditions, um, so you're aware of what we're talking about. Uh, these are safety concerns. I have 480 volts that the bottom of the box are totally exposed, and I like to get those repaired. I have control panels that uh, of pumps that don't work, of uh, pump stations that don't work. Uh, Peter Cooper's Drive one. Uh, we have North Boulevard with no control panel, and thereby we have no generator. And the power goes out. We have to hire a pump truck to go there and, and remove the product because it doesn't need the generator doesn't work. Um, and they're all here. We also have, there's a picture in there of a bottom of a pump of, of a wet well with two pumps that I ask people to go in daily to maintain those pumps. I also give you a picture of the steps going down to those pumps because there's no ventilation, so we have an accumulation of gas. It's deteriorating the metal. Um, it's also unsafe. We have to use meters and uh, we pump individual air, fresh air in to get it to a, a good uh, breathable condition for the work to be done. Um, I need to immediately address it. Um, it's to the point now where I get nervous. And I'm asking these people in good faith, and I feel I'm responsible for their health, to send them home to their families. So therefore, I'm asking for $100,000. Now, I guess the dilemma is as far as revenues. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm suggesting it comes from the $2.77 million we have in retained uh, earnings. It's been locked up for years. It's there. We're not using it. I guess we're using it for the future. And, and as far as I'm concerned, the future is now. Um, I think we ought to figure out a way to take some of that out and use it for repairs and leave the rest into the future. But it's in retained earnings. Um, and my hope was that we didn't have to float bonds or borrow or anything like that. We have money available, and I think we need to find a way to remove it from that account and make these repairs. Um, the second item was a vehicle. We have a crane. The crane was bought, and I believe it was 19 maybe I'm wrong, 2000, 1998, in that area, maybe 2001, I think. And the crane is to pick up pumps out of these wet wells, and it was designed for the smaller wet wells in Riverside um, and some of our other locations, North Boulevard, South Boulevard, and the smaller stations in Onset. And now we have a problem because the crane, we're asking that very crane to pick up larger pumps. Um, it is very dangerous. Um, I got a letter from my, one of my managers, and uh, I actually happened to be at one of the removals of a pump and actually saw it smoke and lose ground. Um, so we're no longer using it. Um, we're going to have to bring out a loader or something to get at the pumps if we have a problem. And that's going to be uh, cumbersome and expensive. So um, we definitely need it. Uh, if I didn't need these items, we've, in the past year, we've 
We've uh, done our very best to cut costs and make repairs and do things in-house. We replaced uh, Pinehurst, we put the pumps in ourselves. And, and I'm really proud of that project. The guys did a great job. I'd like you all to go out there and see it. If you could see it, I've got pictures of it before. And if you saw the after, you'd be amazed. So we are doing all we can in-house with the money we have to correct the problems and the issues. And we address them on a daily basis. Well, there's more than we can handle. And it's going to take some money to buy things that's not in the budget to get it done. Uh, we're also, so you're aware, uh, working on a plan to include <laughs> money in the yearly basis and the EDU rate to address these issues in the future. But I want to talk about today. I want to talk about these issues in front of us. And, and, and uh, I'm asking that you folks help me get this done and uh, move forward. That's all I have. Caroline, motion for favorable action. So moved. Second. 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 I'm sorry, who made the motion? Fine. I am seconded by Mrs. Brown. Um, I think she's born Ms. Brown. Mrs. Brown. Um, I, I have a question sure. for Mr. Campina. Mr. Campina, when you um, started, you it brought to the FinCom, and I'm, I'm just kind of curious if, if you were going to start um, doing something with the grease. Has, has that project is it underway? Are you making money? It's underway. We're making money. The month of um, August, as, I, as funny as to say, I was looking at the money and trying to compare expense. But last uh, in August, we made twenty-eight thousand dollars with grease. Uh, we're averaging roughly ten thousand gallons a day at ten cents a gallon. So we're that, that's we're making close to a thousand dollars a day in the grease. Is that more than you guys have done before? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Side, side. Thank you. I'm Can you sorry. Say two with me? Any others? For um, this is a general question. I'm not sure who's going to answer it, but didn't we discuss at the last meeting we were looking over these that this may need a revision as to how it's written, as to where the funds are coming from? The actual article itself. Oh, uh, the verbiage does not ask for the funds to come from. We uh, from the retained earnings. Um, I think the verbiage is general. I, I try to be specific, yes. so I apologize. The other thing is, we're looking at restricted versus unrestricted. Mm -hmm. there, there has to be something done in that arena, too, I, is my understanding. Correct. That was one of the questions that I had. I was wondering if the town administrator might be able to help us on it, Mr. Andrews. And, um, Move forward. I mean, this is a problem. Can these be taken out of the unrestricted funds? I believe you can set up the capital line within the restricted line for the cost of doing business as we still campaign as well. Uh, the question would be whether you can heal the article with a motion, which um, the town uh, moderator wants to weigh in, but uh, I think the motion can be written in a way that will be more specific. Uh, they will identify the method by the by which the campaign has put forth. Uh, if not, we'll have to amend it on the town meeting floor. Madam Moderator, uh, the Fair Town has a right to amend it on articles. You might need to be able to amend that. Mm -hmm. that would be I would please, I'd have to see the motion. That would seem the actual motion. But, I mean, the way the article is written, it's raising appropriate goal or transfer from available funds. You haven't specified what available funds, so correct, the motion. The article. But on the motion, we could modify the motion, correct? <laughs> to do so, rather we're able to move those funds. Uh, in the meantime, we have to make a decision, will those be quit, we'll be able to move those funds. And uh, you seem to feel that we will be able to, or do we need to consult with power of the or do we also need to we pull up the enterprise fund in the accounting group? Pardon? I have the enterprise fund account. It's been used by the town, so. Mr. Chairman, yeah. Yeah, given the nature of the funds that are being requested, I think it's also important to underscore that um, some of these electrical issues uh, could be hazardous to employees. Yes. Some of the uh, ventilation issues could be hazardous to employees. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to be in the truck that's uh, going to be. Uh, moving heavy equipment in and out. If you've been in one of the uh, pump stations, if you, if you haven't been there, you got to get, get in there one time, take a look. I've been there with Chairman Cruz and other selectmen. The idea is, is that I, I would consider what he's putting forward an emergency item that would come under um, the, the you know, well-being, 
keep the well-being of not only the employees, but for the best of our keep up the mm -hmm. So from an emergency standpoint. Um, I don't argue that this is required. Um, I mean, taking one look at the pictures tell me this is required. Um, however, I, for clarity to the town meeting voters and the people who pay into the enterprise fund, I feel as though it's necessary that the motion be stated exactly where these funds are coming from and that this is an enterprise fund expense. Excuse my hesitation. We don't have a motion, so it's hard for us to write an amendment at this point. We could support it with the provision that we will amend it, so mm -hmm. amend the motion to include the source of funds in the interim. Yes. And we can ensure that we can, in fact, use those, use those unrestricted funds. Um, if we're unable to do that, then we'll have to find another plan. <coughs> And the motion could should be probably amended to include that as sourcing if it was such. So I would think that we could approve with the. Um, I would need you to need to amend this motion that we approve with the stipulation that the source of funds uh, be identified specifically to the water. Uh, Pollution Control Facility Enterprise Fund. Um, from the unrestricted uh, retained earnings or from uh, another identifiable source. I will change my motion to reflect that. Well, did you get all that? So I would need to withdraw the second and properly. Yes, I would withdraw the second. Okay. You've modified. Do you need the clerk to read it or? Um, I didn't get the first <laughs> part. I'm sorry. Um, okay, I would approve. Um, I would move uh, favorable action on Article Ten. Um, with the stipulation that we amend the article to reflect that uh, we can use the funds from the restricted retained earnings of the Water Pollution Control Facility Enterprise Fund or other source. Or if not, uh, uh, or other not. not. You want restricted? Unrestricted fund. I don't know if we have a store or not. Well, if, we can, if, we, if we can use a restricted fund. Restricted. Are you sure we can do that? No. I don't, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I don't think you can get out of restricted. I think we, it has to be we did it. Restricted. We did it earlier this year. What do you mean? That's how we fixed the bridge. $136,000. That's how we fixed it. We can always come back with a motion. Yeah, I think right now, tonight, we have to have it. And we, you know, if we're going to support this, we need to have this ready for okay. the charter. And we need to solve this within a couple of days yeah. as to whether or not it can be done because it has to be written for uh, the printed warrant. Again, we're saying if possible. So, I mean, or. <coughs> Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do believe that these articles are imperative to to the enterprise fund, and I want to be able to make sure that we can word this so that they can get it one way or the other. The only thing, other thing that I would like to ask is, does the town have a crane at the maintenance shed that you guys could use, or it doesn't, I mean, is this something that could be shared, the cost, or is it something that you need on a regular basis? It doesn't have the weight capacity. We're only 1,300 pound crane. Uh, 
because the real issue is, is when you're straight up, you get all your lifting. You have to extend out nine feet, so we have to have 700 pounds at the end of that. And the current building has 900 pounds to meet that capacity. So the town's initial maintenance bond, and then we have extended out is less than 500 pounds. Gotcha. So we can't okay. pick it up. That's, That's why we have to use a That was my question. Thank you. Through you guys. You said we did this already for the bridge guy? Yes, as far as the funds, we've already been into the restricted funds. Uh, we uh, contacted Mount Revenue because it was at that time, obviously, it was an environmental emergency, right. where this would be a, a personnel emergency because of safety, but and they, they approved it and removed it and we repaired. So we went, we've hit this. It used to be 2.8, now it's 2.7 because of the money we took out. So would we have to go down? through them again to get approval? I'm not sure, but I, I, I think I leave that in the hands of Mr. Mr. Andrews, the minister, and I'm sure he'll find, because he was a, he facilitated it last time, so I'll trust, I'll trust his judgment and his expertise to make sure it happens, because he did it last time. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, just a regular process will work. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, too. Uh, under Chapter 44, Section 53, Captain 1 half, there are prescribed methods by doing this, and this is the prescribed method. But if I could, Mr. Chairman, for you, I would give ourselves a little window with the buying's point specifically to retain earnings, which really are the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. We show the public the pictures of some of the horrendous electrical situations and horrendous um, air conditioning and ventilation systems. You know, that's part of the tutorial we're going to be doing. Um, I, I think it's going to be very clear. You know, and we'll, we'll double check it and make sure the council that we have the right language um, and I think the chairman's point earlier was well taken that the committee just would be advisory so your support would be to advise us on this and town meeting members on it but we'll take your motion question I have deals with you have an extensive list here of dealing with the pump stations and you indicate an awful lot of new work. Is the request for $100,000 coming out of the enterprise fund, does this reflect that you do not have the maintenance and repair capacity in your annual budget? Um, it's a good question. Uh, <coughs> I, I think it's appropriate for for what we, what I was aware of when I came on board, as I investigate and start finding problems and asking for workshop worksheets uh, for the investigation, I think it's something that needs to be included in all future budgets. Um, and actual, uh, as we move into 2013, the repair items, we're actually collecting that data now, putting some real numbers to it. Uh, we're talking about routine replacement and some of these specific items that are on this list, we're trying to attack those and write them into the 2013 budget, um, which we have to, and, and we will address that. Um, so we are prepared to do that. That would, in my interpretation of what you said, mean that the rates that we have been using in the past set by the sewer commissioners may be subject to change. This subject to change every year. And so you have to answer your question, yes, they're always subject to change, yes. But as you incorporate more of this into your budget, yes. you would anticipate that there would be a higher yes. request for higher rates. Yes. One more question um, through you to Mark. Mark, are all of these uh, items that are on here, do you feel are uh, enough emergency or should it be broken up to where not all of them are of serious enough nature to make it fly through the Department of Government? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, please. Can you answer the question, Mr. Chairman? Have you seen the answer? Well, as I was saying, we actually picked up the ones that are to the point of safety, major safety right now. The other ones we're working with and, and we've made provisions to, to work safely around them. But these issues, the ones that we've highlighted, they're just... The only reason I'm asking is I wanted to make sure that because you throw it at DOI and there's some things in there they'll think you don't want them to kick back the whole thing if you put something in there that's not quite up to the emergency level. You know well, I mean? We have gotten advice from the, the, the uh, Massachusetts um, 
safety department okay. on the ventilation items. Uh, they came up with confined space okay. and, and putting the people in these confined spaces um, to ask them to work for a continuous amount of time to make these repairs. So their recommendation is to redo the ventilation and the humidifiers. Um, so for safety, um, right now we had to go. We had to go out and buy some monitors so they can wear them. So as the money goes off, they come back up and we add fresh air. So these issues that we're talking about were definitely addressed. Um, we addressed them as far as what we could and could not do, and, and to, to work safely within the law. And so that's why we identified these. I agree with you. Really they still want to jeopardize you over something. One or two things, not enough. Appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Down. Just because this is my first time to do this, I was under the impression that the Finn, the Finance Committee had the first opportunity to make the amendment. That's what we were discussing, yes. Okay. And we're going to have to, one of our articles that contain the source of funds and instructions as written probably we may not, or may, I'm not sure. We'll see. But if we have to, we have right to the amendment. I think it's appropriate that we put it in. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying. Is this the motion for the amendment? This is the motion um, as was modified, which included a provision for an amendment. Okay. And to the motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 700. Thank you. 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 Okay. I'm just going to uh, run down through the breakdown. It, it, uh, it covers four different areas that we're looking at right now. Um, the largest piece of this uh, request is obviously trying is funding a, um, a larger vehicle for us. Um, I'm looking for a four-wheel drive diesel. We, we do have the new boat. It is heavy. The boat is 9,000 pounds, and then you add 200 gallons of fuel along with a 3,000-pound trailer and we do trailer it. We also do a lot of um, uh, movement of other large equipment, things of that nature. Uh, the truck um, that we will be taking out, moving down to the seasonal employees has about 150,000 miles on it. Um, it just went through some pretty extensive repairs. Um, it, it, we do keep our vehicles in, I'd have to say, very good condition if anybody's seen them. We, we keep our, our maintenance up so the trucks you know, we'll get 10, 12, 15 years out of them. Um, I am looking for diesel because I'm looking for, uh, unfortunately, I know diesel is a little more expensive, but it, we're going to get some better fuel efficiency out of the vehicle, um, and we're going to get a lot more power from the, uh, the, the drivetrain and the truck itself. <coughs> it will come with the emergency package, um, uh, radios, communications, VHF radios, UHF radios, such as the police department scanners, um, lighting, winch, Things of that nature, and obviously the towing capacity uh, is extremely high on these trucks. The um, second portion of this is upgrading uh, our navigational markers. Last year we did it with um, Wiwianic, where we did 21 navigational aids all the way down to the Wiwianic bridge from the entrance, and uh, we're trying to identify more locations uh, throughout Onset, Wareham, some of the coves, Buttermilk Bay, um, which is going to enhance. Uh, some of the other areas for boaters to navigate through red and green cans, uh, rock markers, swim markers, uh, all that nature. Just better identification for people to get through the waterways. We're trying to make them as user friendly as possible. So if we can keep uh, picking this off every couple of years to try and enhance this, and we're just trying to cover everything for uh, people to get around. Third part is the Bessie Park docks. We've already built six um, eight by 20 four-foot floats 
um, from the project that just went through. Um, I did not know that prior to Hurricane Bob, there were actually five floats on one side and three on the other. So what I want to do is build two new floats. We build everything in-house, um, cut down on the, uh, the additional um, labor costs. So uh, myself and Jamie will build them over the winter. And that will give us just over 200 feet worth of dockage at Bessie Park now. We're, and we're trying to keep, we're still enhancing it. We put new uh, aluminum gangways down there. We're building um, a different platform just for some people. We have some new lighting that's going to be going in on the docks. It's all um, solar. And that, this is just going to uh, build up this area. Probably one of the docks we're going to turn into a kayak launching dock also. So you can actually put your kayak on the end of the dock and get into your kayak and then slide into the river so you don't have to balance getting in and out so you don't uh, jeopardize anybody falling overboard. The last um, part is more uh, department equipment. It's going to cover UHF portable radios and um, I believe one or two base stations, which is going to work with the police chief's uh, radio system. We're just trying to get uh, up to date with his with his new um, system also. This will enhance the portables for our seasonal. Myself, Jamie, um, as well as one of the patrol boats. I'm also going to upgrade our VHF portables, which is the common uh, frequency that the boaters use to make contact with us. Um, I, I, we're waterproof radios, things like that. The, the new ones float, the old ones don't, so this will save us from dropping them overboard. And I will also be requesting to purchase a side scan sonar unit, which is going to be going on the new patrol boat, which is in the onset. The side scan is a lot different than your normal. Uh, depth sensor, if some of you that are familiar with boats, this one actually puts almost uh, like a 2 to 3D image of the bottom. So as you're, as you're scanning, it's continuously uh, sending beams down and it's drawing an outline of what your bottom is. So um, if you have a, a victim that's down there, you, will, you can actually make an outline of a, of a subject that we can uh, find. So it's good for search and rescue. I've used it for locating moorings where we've actually seen the chain running along the bottom and you can pick up the bell mushrooms that we have. So it's a, it's a pretty useful tool. And it's, it's combined with the side scan sonar GPS. We can interface it into everything else that we have already on the scope. So. Um, the total request is 79,000. Um, and that's going to be a request of transfer from the uh, 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 permits reserve, reserve uh, for appropriations account to the Harbor Master Maintenance account. We currently had, uh, when the, my first letter to the town administrator came out, I, I have it listed as 152929 uh, is the total amount that we have in that account. Um, as of today, we have 1556 and I still have another 10,000 pending on people that are late. Um, it's 7,000 in fees about 3,000 on fees, so over the next month or so we'll be cleaning that up and uh, we should be pretty much 100%. Um, Karen, seeing a motion for favorable action? So moved. Second. 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 Uh, Mr. McDonald seconded it. Mr. Rock, original motion discussion. Mrs. Couture? Um, I noticed this before because you just said that the total was $79,000. I'm yep. sorry, yeah. Um, but your total was $70,000. That, I was, I was made aware that you may have gotten the wrong sheet because yeah. I have, a, yeah. there, there was an updated version of 79000 that was, okay. was sent to the administrator's office. Okay, so there's a cost increase there somewhere of one of these items, is that yeah, it? Yeah, the, the, the original one that was sent out was uh, 79000 the, the main one that was sent out was seventy nine. Okay. Will that have to be am, uh, amended on the floor? Uh, if it's no, the motion says seventy nine thousand. Okay. Your worksheet was seventy nine thousand. Okay. That's All right. why I asked. Right. I'm, I'm not sure. That's fine. It was seventy nine. Remember, we had to. I had a uh, update on the names. Yeah. And then we submitted the new one. <laughs> 79. 79. Right. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Through you for Gary. Your fees and permits were they up from last year? Oh no, they we didn't change the fee structure at all. Um, the, the for the harbor service permits, which obviously uh, we, at some point we're going to end up reviewing, but 
we still stay with the $60 for the permit and that's a dollar a foot. So we're pretty much right on track for the same amount. We did pick up some new moorings this year. We, we lost some, so. Is, the, is that price structure, uh, that would be out of Thank you. I would say for the budget, I'm sure we have that question. Go oh, who's that question? <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure this won't be out of order if you don't have your gavel, so I'll probably just ignore it and tap on the table. It's available uh, vehicle. <laughs> this is kind of a two-part question. Uh, Jeff, 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 Jeff,
Uh, good evening. My name is Mike Flaherty. I am the chairman of the Wareham Library Board of Trustees. Uh, together, uh, Denise Medeiros, uh, the library director. Um, Your article is for fifty thousand uh, to remedy building deficiencies. Um, well, I find myself in the interesting position tonight to actually inform you that we're going to be with, we, we intend to withdraw that article at town meeting. Uh, we've had much discussion between our uh, Board of Selectmen liaison, our FinCon liaison, the town administrator, the capital planning chair, and all of them have recommended that we withdraw this and um, go through the capital planning process instead. Um, we had a spirited discussion about that at our trustee meeting um, after going through all of that. And um, we reluctantly uh, did decide to withdraw it. And um, we'll work in good faith um, through that process. But um, just the, the, throughout, the, throughout all the meetings and stuff that I've been going through, it just seems everybody understands there's no, there's no disagreement. That, that, that these these repairs need to be done to the library. It's been known for a long time. Uh, as far as I understand it, I guess the windows and such have been in the capital plan for about two and a half years, yet <coughs> not done. So um, the, the concern the concern that many that I just that, that I mentioned had was that by the trustees doing this in this way that we did with the Warren article. It would sort of be circumventing the capital planning process and we didn't want to be perceived as doing that. So we're gonna, we're gonna follow the process that's been just described to us and uh, take it from there. But, but nobody seems to disagree that it needs work. Um, just it's a matter of getting it done. I really don't have anything to add, I mean, other than the fact that I think part of it came up just because there hasn't been, you know, consistent leadership at the library and there probably wasn't someone watching it. And <coughs> what I found out since I got involved in the process is that the Capital Planning Committee had things on their list that I didn't even realize were on there and some of it is submitted by municipal maintenance and some of it is submitted by the library. So I think we just really need to all get on the same page and. I need to know what's on the for the library at least and have it all go through one channel. So, um, but we, I'm going to work with Mr. Andrews on getting that accomplished and we should be good to go. There's no motion on the floor, but I will open it for a brief discussion. Mr. Trudeau? Um, I, I would make a motion to uh, approve this article for a matter of discussion. Point point of order. It won't be withdrawn until we get to town meeting. Right. Okay. So it's still it's still on the okay. So you so still I, I make a motion then to to uh, approve the request for approval. Uh, favorable action. Favorable action. Okay. Now, discussion. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'm sure you to the chair of the board of library and the library director. <clears throat> Speaking for capital planning, um, the the process has been difficult in identifying the last three to four years of the town needs. If we look at the total town. It's multiple names. So the first process, obviously, is to get yourself on the list. And to your point, make <coughs> sure that the, the old list and the new list kind of gel. I still have some questions about that. I'll work through uh, Mr. Sullivan. But just getting on the list is not going to assure that you're going to have action because the list is incredibly long. You have to be able to convince the town administrator that he needs to take some actions in the capital area. We we recommend, but the ultimate decider on capital expenditures happens to be the town administrator. Okay, so just so I'm trying to clarify that point. But if it comes before us and and we look at it and we have a discussion, at least there's some background for the town administrator to have and understand where that is. We just want to make sure that, yeah, you're on the list, okay, fine. Now, 
what do you have to do to get the town administrator to understand your priority is higher than it might be perceived? <coughs> Ms. Brock? Oh. In that case, I would suggest that you didn't take it off the warrant. Let the let it, if people vote for it. If it's if these are necessary repairs that have to be made, I think we should look at making the repairs. And if, if you know, we, we we all know that the capital list is, is long and we, we you know, we know that you've all put a great deal of, of work into it and um, I just, I just hate to see <coughs> building uh, deficiencies going and taken care of. May I respond to that? Um, Mrs. Couture, speak first. I, I'm just going to make a comment and say that I'm a little flabbergasted because since I've been on the finance committee, I've heard library, 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 library. Um, and some of the arguments that have been happening in the past couple of years about, you know, the accreditation of the library and all of this, and this is the first time I ever heard that there were actual building problems. Mr. Mm -hmm. To Mrs. Clark's comment, um, the problem that we're encountering here, Ms. Brock, is that we were told in previous years that we needed to install some windows, we had to replace some valves on a Sanyo ductless air conditioning dehumidifier system. We needed some painting. What we don't have in capital planning is that kind of discussion that says what happened to the previous requests dealing with the AC, dealing with a self-checkout. If those were priorities in prior years, and they're not appearing on this this year, we're having some major disconnects in terms of what's being presented to capital planning. So from my point of view, having to go forward the town meeting, not necessarily a positive thing. Everyone knows how I feel. Most four letter words are bad. The library has one in it free. Okay? How do you want to run something when everything is free? Okay? You need to find some way to make some funds out of it. That's my opinion right there. Four letter word is bad. Mr. McDonald. I will not address that comment. I <laughs> there, there's no doubt that uh, as a former library trustee, even though short term, uh, there's been some turmoil at the library. And I think that's probably probably added a certain element to this where there was some confusion. Uh, what wanted before is probably not what's needed now. And I, and I would suggest to the library board of directors and, and also to the Get a, and the capital plan to get together and do a five-year plan that makes sense because I think we're now a little more stable. We have a stable group. We have a you know, stable leadership at the library, and uh, it needs to have a, a good long-term look at this and, and do it right. And, and it is a need. I've been over there. Trust me, it is a need. It's just a question of with $98 million, how do you make everybody's needs go away? It's, it's a difficult task. To respond to that. Mr. Trudell. Two capital planning meetings ago, the town administrator and I believe the chair of capital planning and the rest of capital planning were in agreement that there was a need for the library, the town administrator, capital planning, the trustees of the library, and the friends of the library need to sit down in a room and have a meaningful discussion of what is going to be supported, what can be supported. Uh, from my perspective at this point, the ball is in the town administrator's hands to try and get all the players in there. Um, given the urgency of town meeting, I'm, I'm not sure that might be one of his highest priorities. But I would think after town meeting, we might be able to re-suggest that. Excellent suggestion. Um, I'd just like to respond uh, particularly to Mrs. Brock's comments and Mr. Trudell's. Um, uh, Mr. Trudell, um, yeah, it's been a learning process for myself as well. Um, and I've come to learn that, you know, yes, you go, you go through this capital planning process, and really that capital planning list of items is really a, a wish list. You know, sometimes wishes come true and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they're pipe dreams, you know, and 
and that's why and that's why we reluctantly pulled this because we, we thought you know we, at least if we went to town meeting and if the town meeting voters voted for it then it would be guaranteed but again i mean it's tough to do when you had the town administrator the, the board of select um, liaison the fincon liaison uh, the capital planning chair everybody telling you don't do it pull it so that's why we decided to pull it um but to, i mean to mrs brown's point um yeah there are there is certainly uh, quite a few people saying no just let it go through and um we're, we're not we're not the trustees aren't ready to do that right now we'd like to work in good faith uh but if it doesn't work out we just might come back and it'll be for more than fifty thousand dollars just i mean because these things just get worse over time that would be a probably a good point for this spring yeah the town administrator would he did that because he has to prepare his budget very soon. Any other comments? Mr. Brown? Well, I commend you for, for working with the different boards and I, um, I I think, you know, I think that's a, that's a good way to go. But I, I can tell you, I for one, if, if, if things don't get taken care of, which I'm sure that the time, I'm, I'm sure that everyone involved is going to work with you in good faith, but I, I'm sure that you know, we will be looking to work with you in the spring if, if things deteriorate or don't get don't improve. I appreciate that. Any further comments? So, Flaherty, I would say to you that the current plan is it's not a wish list. All right, it's a wish list. All right, and the nine million that's on there is very real. All right, and there's been a lot of surveys done and some of the items that are on there will also require funds just to do engineering studies, et cetera. It really comes down to a list of as to what the town can and can't do. And every day that goes by, I think you're right, yes, we do have a problem that that list keeps growing and the value of the list keeps growing. And so <coughs> the town will have to address it. There's always a temptation to handle the band-aids because they're the most inexpensive. But in the meantime, as you heard here tonight, we're having problems with cranes, we're having problems with pumps, we're having problems with our water pollution in the enterprise. Uh, we've also had problems where our, for a long time our, we didn't have a uh, solid plan on replacing our cruisers, we didn't have a solid plan on our school buses, we're very much of those types of things tonight. So I would hope you would understand that it's not really a, a wish list, it's a priority list, and I know you have a tremendous amount of sympathy in the town. All right, uh, and there's always a danger when a single group comes out outside of the process and says, I don't want to be included in the priorities, I want special treatment. I commend you for taking this position and I understand why it happened. All right, and I truly, uh, please express my gratitude as the chairman of the FedCom to the Board of Library Trustees, all right, that they have made this decision. I appreciate Great. it. Thank you. Is there any further conversation? We do have a motion on the floor for for favorable action. Are we, are we still discussing this then? No, I'm asking if there's any further discussion and we'll take a vote. Exactly. I'm not sure which to you also withdraw the motion. I, I, I can withdraw. Where's your motion? Um, no, I, I second it, but I had a question. Do yeah. you have the option of saying I, nay, or abstain. This point, the committee needs to indicate to the town something I recommend and give consideration. No, it's okay with Yeah, I don't. No. I'm not willing to put a negative twist on this by voting negative. Me I, I either. Just, I can't no. do that. Me either. Right. So I would accept the withdrawal of the motion. I would draw myself. Withdraw the second. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we, will be, we will be in our extension, but right? we did not take a vote because we are in the Okay. Oh, please. I think we got another one. Well, I was going to ask one. I was going to ask one. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll just say that. Do you want to take him next again? What's the other? Next time it's going to be citizens. Check the balance. Petitions. Checks and balances is the first on my list. Um, just, just you know, before I begin, obviously, um, um, oh, Mike Flaherty, and, and but now I'm, I'm taking my hat off as chair of the uh, Library Board of Trustees. I'm speaking for myself here. Um, 
uh, you have before you an, uh, an article to um, hopefully bring some some checks and balances to the uh, to the process in the town charter used to uh, not remove or suspend town employees or officers. Um, what, what, if you have the attachment that has the full um, verbiage, essentially, I, I make it clear that um, in, 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 instead, leave, leaving no doubt that that, that the the, um, the appointing authority for, for 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 when it comes to this, when it comes to removing people. Or, or suspending them, that that authority will lie with the board of selectmen. Uh, For the record, this is Article Twenty. Yeah, thank you. Will lie with the board of selectmen and not with the with the town administrator or or, or anyone else. Um, I'm, I'm I'm here to have answer questions if you like. Motion for favorable action. I make a motion for favorable second. action. Second. Second. Mr. McDonald. Discussion. Question. Lots of discussion. Sure, Within the process within the town, I hear clearly where this article has come from. And sometimes when you look at the paper, you do have questions on how it works. But is it within the power of the selectmen to affirm or not affirm the removal of personnel? I know it's theirs within 15 days of hiring. Right. Answer the, ask the question could, again. Could, do the selectmen have a role in affirming or not affirming what the town administrator does when he suspends an employee? Currently? Yes, I, I don't know. I actually support the article and concept, especially. I think it's a it's a, it's a good way to uh, <coughs> take some of the it, it's a checks and balances are calling it. We call it the separation of duties, if you will. So, but I, I actually think this takes this is not where we stop with the board of selectmen because the board of selectmen are supervising the administration. I, I think you have to go a little higher and I, I would almost support an amendment to make this a, the appointing authority, authority and when I say appointing authority I'm talking about the, the one with the town moderator, the chairman of the FinCom and the chairman of the board of selection. I think that would make a better group to be the uh, to, to hold the hearing or be the whatever it is, the judge in the hearing. I, I just, I think stopping at the Board of Selectmen, and no offense to them, I just think that there's just too close a relationship between the Board of Selectmen and the town administrator and, and the charter for that to be as effective as going up just a, a step higher. Um, I have never read this attachment A. Does anybody actually have a copy of this attachment A? No. I did read it one time, but I don't think I have a copy on it. It's attachment A. It, it's listed on, on the article mm -hmm. number 20. Mrs. Brown? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Thank you. I, 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 I don't think you should go to your appointing authority. I mean, if a person is going to be disciplined, um, generally, I would say, unless they're under the, unless they're under the, the direct supervision of the town administrator, it wouldn't be the town administrator, but it would be the, the board of selectmen. And I just think that, um, that you know, the board of selectmen govern the town. I mean, that's, that's I, I just think that, uh, you know, I think that having this, like what we went through recently with a, a hearing, I think that was as difficult a process to have the town administrator there doing it as it was, and I, and I think it would, remove him from that uncomfortable situation, him or her, whomever it is. It's, it's, it's just meant to, to have somebody else look at it and not to appear to be, you know, one-sided. That, that, that's my opinion, and I think that the Board of Selectmen should, should be the ones that, 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 that are the hearing on it. Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, whomever. Any other questions? Anyone else? My opinion is, though, 
okay, I can I can see where it's, sometimes time isn't isn't you know, always on your side. Someone has to be able to. I'm not saying in every case that it works that way, but sometimes there isn't um, you know, things have to be done immediately without uh, you taking this power away for immediate action. No, you're not. Yeah. You're, you're, he, he can still, he can still, I'm sorry. Can I respond? Yes. Um, Dominic, you're, just, you're taking, he, the, the town administrator obviously can still terminate somebody, but they have a, a, a certain period of time that they can <coughs> request a hearing. And all this is doing is requesting that somebody else be the hearing officer, like the Board of Selectmen. That's, that's the only, the, the, the town administrator is still the person that's going to, to, to dismiss someone or reprimand someone, that doesn't take that away from them. That that needs to be there. That's that's the intent. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what I thought. Please. I'm sorry. Now, my question for the moderator: This is a, basically a charter, right? Page 15. It is not so written. Is this? This is a charter. Is it presented? Mm -hmm. How is the motion? It's a charter. I have not seen the motion on this, and it, I, it did discuss it with um, town council last week and brought up that same point that this, in essence, is a charter change, and I'm not so sure that it doesn't require a special act of the legislature. Um, I'm hoping that if he's in this week, I'll get to meet with him again and discuss it further, but my initial reaction was that it might be a <coughs> special act of the legislature. I think it comes up under, under chapter 89. The traffic changes. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to probably do a little time on that. My second question would be what vote is required at the town meeting? Two thirds. Two thirds of the town meeting. So uh, even if we vote favorable action, we notice the potential that uh, this has to be a motion for a charter change. Mm -hmm. And we have to actually be, we have to amend it if the charter be <coughs> amended. The charter change. So I would, uh, I just have a straight motion for approval at this point mm -hmm. for favorable action. I'm sorry, for favorable action. Do we wish to amend this to change a charter change? It's going to be required, otherwise it's going to be in limbo for us. Mm -hmm. I would also say um, <coughs> we do not have to express an opinion on this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. It's most important because it is not a financial matter. I think it is a financial matter. Does anyone know if um, this was brought up with the child arrangement from last year? Was it part of any one of those changes from last year, the child changes that were recommended? I don't believe it. I don't believe it was. 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 I don't believe if that wasn't one of them, and how important it actually is, that board went through the chart quite extensively. <laughs> this, this article, logically, in my mind, leads me to my issue of not having a personnel board. We're saving money by knocking off the personnel board so we don't have any records of when people get raises, when they get merit reviews, and then we turn around three months later and we discharge them. It is the most illogical system I know of. And so the only thing that the employees have for an alt out of this whole process is, all right, they're, they're dismissed, there's a hearing, and then the lawyers come, and we end up back to the information I requested two meetings ago with how many out-of-court settlements do we have and how much money is this costing us. And I think if, if we really looked at the question of how this is done, we know it's flawed. I don't, not the article per se, but the process. I'm not sure this is the answer, but I, but I know that a personnel board and out of court settlements, it's just, it's just a continuing best resort. Ms. Um, well, Mr. Trudeau just backed up my point of it is a financial matter. It can be a financial mm -hmm. matter. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and I don't know procedurally what would hold us up from giving an opinion if it's, I mean, there is, there is a precedent for, um, how do I want to say this, a uh, citizen's 
petition article for each other change. There is a precedence for that. So, either you agree with the procedure or you don't. So I think that we should try to do anything. There is precedent, but it was not written that way, that this was a problem for us. Alan's in now, if you could answer my previous question. <laughs> never, never return to a meeting out. <laughs> Could you please restate the, the, the charter review last year, um, to, the to the chair, to you, the charter review, did they um, uh, review the um, charter change on this? Uh, yes. They did. And we did go through that. We did make some changes. It did not pass. Okay. Your, your change is on the same line as what's written in this year? We, we added some more pieces to review. Uh, I don't think we removed the, we looked at the town administrator position and stuff and this whole thing, we make some changes so there's a little more, the, the employee had some, um, how should I put it, the employee had some more wiggle room as far as what they could do and had a little more, what we felt was more fair representation in the, in the area. But again, those, that whole thing was done as a member, that was done as a special actor school. Yeah. Yeah, those, a lot of those articles. Mm -hmm. You have to ask the moderator. I think you're, you know, you're getting into an area where you're changing someone's job description and function and on the charter as a town administrator or a select or something like that. I don't mm -hmm. think you're getting into an area where you don't know if the citizen's position can change some language and verbiage where they can actually get into that part of it. I remember we had some strict rules that we have to do with some of the quite a special language changes. Oh. So I, I can't give you the answer by the way. No, okay. You know, you, you know, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Any other questions, Mr. McDonald? Correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't been in Wareham that long. But up until a certain point, it was done by the selectmen. Is that correct? And that at some point in time over the last few years that they had a hearing that was changed to the town administrator, I believe, under a prior town administrator. Does anybody I, know? There's been no charge. I don't know. There was not, the selectman did not serve as the... The current charter has been in place since... It's not the charter, it's just no. the way it was done. That's what I'm saying. This may just be an interpretation of, of the... <coughs> So I don't know. So does anybody have, nobody seems to have an understanding that it might have been done that way? Okay. Any other discussion? Do we wish to vote on the motion as stated, or do we wish to amend the motion before I call for the vote? We must caution you as written. It will not support a charge. Mr. Heath. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, 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 uh, I think that we should, we should go with it as it is written here, and if an amendment needs to be made, once it's been researched, we, we can always make an amendment to it. On the floor? It, yes, it, we would have the right to make an amendment to, on the floor. I mean, even if, if we pass it, I'm not saying if you were going to pass it or not pass it, but I'm just saying, let it go the way it is, and let's let's see if it's it, it, and we have the first option to 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 amend yes, it. Well, that would be my suggestion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Yeah. Three hundred opposed. Three hundred opposed. How many? Three. Four. Three. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> the next citizen's petition will be uh, for the purchase of the Green Point Country Club. Do we have one of these people get out of that? I don't want to buy the Bay Point Country Club. I'm sorry? I don't want to buy the Bay Point Country Club. I, could, Country Club. I could. If I just weigh in on collective bargaining articles, uh, yes. is that okay, Mr. Chairman? Can we do it? Mr. Andy, the hot seat. <laughs> well, my name is Mr. Try, sir. Uh, working off, through you, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, working off of the timetable that we had talked about last meeting, uh, 
has brought forward uh, two collective, respective collective bargaining agreements to the Board of Selectmen last night um, that met in executive session. They have uh, received those articles. Uh, they're reviewing the language for the contracts for the they're part of the process, and um, they will be meeting next Tuesday uh, again in executive session to further discuss the articles uh, that uh, relate to those two contracts. So we try diligently to get the process rolling forward with respect to your timetable, but it might take more than what we have. And uh, I've advised the board uh, to, uh, to obviously to make whatever modifications, adjustments that they feel that they need to make. Uh, on the agreements, and so it might take a little bit more time than we anticipated. Just want to make sure that folks understood that. Okay. okay. Thank well, you, we will take no action on these articles at this time. That's fine. You know, we have mm -hmm. no numbers. I right understand now. that. But so uh, my understanding is there is an appropriation already in force. All right. There is a reserve account. There's a reserve account, and that That's will stand until such time as we're able to. You are correct. Thank okay. you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, I have nobody to speak on behalf of the Bayport Country Club. Okay. Motion for favorable action. Second. 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 Discussion. Yes. What are they thinking? Come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because somebody told me I had to write a. A pro opinion of this, I went back and did a little research. Now, I'm not saying that I support this article, but if I did support this article, I would only support it from the standpoint that if they bought the country club, they put a management company in the place to as caretakers and also whatever the golf course people and utilize this as a new revenue stream because you can do bar mitzvahs, parties, and, and you can get golf fees out of it. I, I'm just saying they're. they're there is a pro to this. I'm just not in favor of it, but I, there, there, it, it's, it's been through so many hands. And, I, and at one time, I believe the town actually owned this property. Yes, we did. So, so maybe the other pro is that it stops going through this process of we'll buy it, we're going to make it great. Oh, by the way, we're going to have a bankruptcy, <laughs> and, and that's certainly something we want to avoid. But at the same time, it's a lot of money and. and I don't know that uh, our administration wants to get into managing a golf course. I know we want. Yeah, I'm glad you write the column. And uh, we already tried that. The town already ran it. And they already did all exactly what you said. And they couldn't make money out. And two other major people have bought it and have tried to make money on it. Nobody can make money on it. I don't think we should even go anywhere near it. Not very judge. Actually, there's a lot of reasons that you should, and there's a lot of reasons you shouldn't. One of the things that strikes me about this is, indeed, municipalities do well at spending money and supporting human services, and businesses do well by making money. Businesses have not been able to make money at Bay Point Country Club. I don't reason to think that we, as a municipality, can turn around and, and demonstrate our skill except for losing money at it. Secondly, unless I have missed some attachments to this, I see no evaluation of what the property is, I see no cash income flow, I see no return on my investment. Sure, I see nothing but a document that says we ought to go buy this for $1.4 million. How anyone thinks that you could spend $1.4 million without any kind of documentation and support is really a stretch of the imagination. So, uh, though there may be some Kelly compelling reasons for this, I'm not safe enough. Mrs. Brown. Well, I'm a golfer, and I like to golf there, but I do know that golf clubs are hurting desperately in these economic <coughs> downturn. And if there was a way to feasibly if there was a plan, uh, a business plan presented to us that we could feasibly do something like this, 
I, I personally don't think it's, it's out there right now. And I think that the, the times are, are, are difficult now, and I just, I, I couldn't support it without a, a full-fledged business plan. And I know golf, cart, golf courses are dying right now. That's, that's all I have to say. We sold it at the height of the market for a million dollars. Exactly. It was to buy it back for a million four in the lowest point of the real estate market. It doesn't make a lot of sense, guys. <laughs> Mr. Paulson, you've been quiet for that. <laughs> he doesn't play golf. Nothing about a roof is coming. That's going to say there's no roof. I think the roof is coming in. Yeah, the <laughs> but my time will come. <laughs> Mr. McDonald. I just want to reiterate, I wrote the pro. I didn't say I supported it. I wrote the, the pro side of it. But I will say this. Sometimes managing a golf course, the, or the, the reason the golf course fell is because they have a management issue as opposed to nobody can make money at it. I you know, I like a challenge, but I, I think you can make money just about anything if you do it right. But I'm still up for it. Just so you know. Alright, I'll make a serious comment now. Um, first off, I'm just very flabbergasted over over being presented with this article. When I sat through, was it last spring or last fall town meeting? Okay, that um, this particular person presented a wonderful presentation for improving this area um, into to a convention center or whatever his dream was, et cetera, et cetera. Now to simply throw in the towel and say, "Hey, buy me out because I can't do this," um, I think is a little ridiculous. Um, the town can't afford to buy it. Um, we can't afford to operate it. Um, it needs an investor, but we're not it. I just I think that uh, Mr. Canenzi needs to find an investor to sell it to, um, but not the town. Can we put that on the discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the article, please probably say aye. All those opposed. 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 Aye. Abstentions? Zero, seven, zero. She's in the next room and she would come over and speak. In the interim, one of the things I would bring up, all right, is the question has come up as to moving the question in the committee. Under Robert's Rules of Order, we act and function as a committee because we're less than 12 members. That allows us to do far more discussion than we normally would under Robert's Rules. Robert's Rules says that each person gets to speak once unless allowed by the remainder of the body. That's also one of the reasons why I also move sometimes the committee on the whole. Under the under Robert's rules of orders rules for committees, committees are designed for the free flow of discussion. And the Robert's rules specifically states that any motion to limit or terminate debate right, is not acceptable. Um, I have a book. I can show you where it is. The idea is on the committee. It's there to do a free flow of information. It's up to the chairman to make sure that it doesn't grab its tail and run in a circle. All right, but uh, moving the previous question to it is not allowed. Actually, it's not allowed according to Robert's rules. Okay. And, and I'm trying to give you as much flexibility as I can at the time, so I do push us into community of the whole so people can have a free flowing conversation when it's appropriate. All right, but so everyone understands. I'm not trying to be tested on it, and I understand why that really exists. And I know as the conversation goes along, sometimes you haven't thought of something, so it brings another point, and it's, oh, yes. Right? And I have to commend the committee. I think we've been, we've been very good over the course of these deliberations as far as not repeating ourselves many times over. Sometimes we get a little slow, but in general, it's a very good, a good conversation. It's still early. Pardon? I understand that. Um, I'm going to push the affordable housing 
uh, article back and then we'll see this way we can make it. The next one would be article number three, which would be the distribution of the local option unit tax. Um, presented uh, by the Capital Planning Committee, so Mr. Trudell. Thank would you. Would you like to take the cut seat in this particular one so, sure, I'd be delighted. so they can hear you? <laughs> Very hard when you have. I'd be delighted to sit there and mumble. Oh, it's good to have it. Would you be kind enough to explain? Unless Mr. Slater would like to say, you have a charm. Would you like to sit with Mr. Jell and explain that, Mr. Jell? Listen, after he nailed me, there's no sense he's going to bother me. Okay. As you recall, Article 3, Capital Planning Committee put this before us because we passed the three quarters of a percent option meal tax in the Springtown meeting. However, there was not a, and at, during that meeting, it was inferred that there would be an equitable split between the school and the town for capital planning. I call that good salesmanship, but we'll, we'll touch not on to that. The fact was that this money, as projected, was placed into the town administrator's budget and it went into the general fund. That's where this money goes. So this article attempts to ask the general <coughs> court to affirm the intent of the town to equitably split between the town as capital items and to the school department this additional meal tax that's the basic explanation of what the intent is have a motion for favorable action so moved second i have a motion front the second discussion uh, where do you start uh, you know, we heard the other side of this the other day. Who are you, Mr. Chairman? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we heard the other side of this the other day. Uh, we were legislating something that they should be doing anyway. And I guess my only problem with this, and, and I agree that something needs to be done to make sure the money gets to the right area, which is capital uh, capital uh, expenditures. Why the 50-50 split? And the reason I, I ask that question is because if the school has more needs at one point or the town has more needs at one point we're we're locking them into a 50 50 split and there's no flexibility there if, if this is the way it's voted this is the way it is and, I, and i'm not i'm not real comfortable when we could possibly have a situation where the town needed more or, or the school needed more and, and you have that flexibility to use it that way to answer the question if i might yeah as it's configured now, it goes into the general fund, and the only thing that the town is responsible to the school department for is the, um, I think it's the non-net spending at the, yeah. bottom, at the bottom of the school budget. So in, in essence, they don't benefit from it, yet in examining their capital needs or going into the high school, <coughs> you look at their buildings, and they're making a very conscious effort uh, to, to maintain it. Mrs. Miranda, I thought it was Dr. Miranda, but I was corrected the other day, that Mrs. Miranda has a capital plan that goes right down into expense items. She's very detailed, very oriented in what she has to do to meet those expenditures. She's struggling like the town is struggling with capital planning. There's no base into the capital planning. So as I've mentioned before to this committee, when you have a zero fund in the capital planning, and you say, I'm going to put X amount of money into it, but you still have X amount of money plus zero funding. At least this way, the school could see money coming to them as part of an additional item that is, is, is not expected. And they're laying off people this year. I hear what you're saying, but going into the general fund doesn't mean it's ever going to get to the school. Policy. At a Springtown meeting, the money from or the projected uh, monies from the distribution 
were in fact put in the general fund. The school buses were not in the Springtown meeting. So the money that was there has been used, if you will, for other items. Now it's the fall, and we're taking what seems to be the same money, or the same pile of money, and we're suggesting that they be used for the school buses. It seems to me we're double counting. We're not in any way suggesting how the school department would use that money. And as far as the money was placed into the town administrator's budget, and I believe three meetings ago, he explained how he expended that money. And I don't want to touch on that subject again. So that, but no matter what happened, it would not occur this year because you're petitioning the general court. And that's a rather slow and convoluted process and could not affect, come into effect until sometime next year. Mr. Brown. Mr. Chairman, I, I strongly support this article because I believe that there are so many places in both the school and the town that need this. We're not going to have a problem of the town getting one. This way, the school's going to expect that they're going to get half of what comes in to go toward their capital needs, which they have a tremendous amount as well, and the town will get half of their capital needs instead of it going to wherever one wants it to go. I would, I strongly support this article. And I, I think the, cap, the capital needs plan it, it, uh, reiterates what I'm saying. Going backwards, I do support the article. I, my problem is this 50-50 split because if you take the sum of money, you're looking at $200,000 going into each pot. So you're basically building a reserve because $200,000, well, I'm just doing a math, little math there. In the town, we got $90 million, and you're putting the $200,000. It's going to take you a little time to build up enough to, to tackle a bigger item. So I'm, I'm wondering if it's, and again, I support the concept, and I and I, and I will vote this article either, either way because it, it gives us an assurance, and that's what I'm, I'm looking for here. But I, I hesitate because I don't like the split when it could be, and then again, I guess, you know, if you don't have the split, then it, it could be all used by the town without the school involved, and the school could, you know, I, I okay, I, I retract my statement. To respond to that, the Department of Revenue recommends a three to five percent of your total budget should go to capital planning. Uh, needless to say, uh, when I say we're zero funded every year and, and the capital planning committee sits down with the needs, and it's no different with the school, the school's been operating on a minimum budget, and to their credit, they've, they've never come to town meeting and trying to take a greater part of the budget. They, they've been suffering, just like the town has been suffering. Um, for, so for me, it's not like I'm trying to build a reserve. I'm just trying to guarantee the school will have a portion of that meal tax to, that they know is, is going to be there for them. That, that's all that this is really trying to do. Well, I obviously am in the minorities here, but I do not see the purpose of this in any way, shape, or form. Um, I understand we have the increased meal tax now, and that was supposed to bring more revenue into the town. I think to limit ourselves in doing any sort of 50-50 split in designating funds to a specific expense is just tying our hands in a way that we don't need to be tied right now. Um, we understand these capital needs are there, and I believe that the town administrator, the board of selectmen, and the finance committee are all working together to try to meet some of these needs of this capital plan, and we should continue to do that, okay? But we're talking $386,000 I believe it is, okay? Yeah. It's not a lot of money, right? And whether it goes into the general fund and capital planning and the town administrator get together and say, this is what we can afford to spend that on this year, then that's what needs to be done because you're gonna take the $386,000 and split it half of each department. Now you've got even less to work with, all right? 
right? I just feel as though it is counterproductive and doesn't get us anywhere. Any further discussion? Yeah. Any point? Uh, and this is so to, to my esteemed colleague across the table. I don't think if we don't do something, we're going to end up like we worse than we are now. Because up until now, they've seen fit, and I don't, I don't say who they are, I guess the, the selectmen and the town administrator fund however they felt, and ignoring the capital needs, or you don't get to a $90 million figure because people are paying attention to capital. So this is not so much a, uh, there may be a drop in the bucket, but the reality is, if something's not done soon, that 90 is going to go grow and grow, and our infrastructure is crumbling. So, if if we don't have preventive maintenances in place, if we don't have, if we're not taking care of our capital needs on a timely basis, and then that has pretty much been proven out. I, I guess I'll let capital planning address the rest of that. But this is a step in the right direction for us to guarantee that a portion of the revenue that's coming in will be put into a capital. What is this? You send that over there. <laughs> this is a guarantee that we're going to get money towards capital. We're not going to put all our money into the operating budget and ignore capital. I, I, we have ignored capital. You, historically, we're obviously not the, you know, the best at planning for the future with our capital. So this is a start. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? May I? <laughs> Go ahead. May I, the chair will speak to this okay. one too. Because I was on record the last time that uh, I, agreed that it should go to capital, but I did not agree with any split, all right? Um, because as has previously been said, you don't always know where the crises are gonna come. I just wanted to bring that up as well. And so I also remember that we wanted to state it a certain way, but couldn't because it was going to take a, we had to pass it as a tax first, right? Much to the chagrin of some members of the committee, that means as, you and me, buddy. <laughs> in doing this, so we could not at that time direct it towards capital versus operating expenses. So I'm disappointed to see the 50 50 because I thought we had discussed that and said, no, not a great idea. However, um, I think some action has to be taken to make sure that it at least goes in that direction. And then we can debate whether the buses belong to the schools, the town, or jointly. Hopefully, jointly. Mrs. Kutu. Well, I think you kind of nailed it. Um, I think that really is my point of that things weren't done, right? And I think that the current administration, and then I'm talking all of it, I'm talking about the Board of Selectmen, the Town Administrator, the FinCon, the Capital Planning, have, re have gotten on top of this, okay? And we're not going to allow that to happen again. Uh, for years and years, things were ignored. They just went along and survived. Whatever you know, operating expenses, whatever needed to be done, threatened to turn the lights off because we didn't have the money. Um, I don't see that happening anymore. I really see people being involved and in staying on top of things. And I think we need to let them continue to do that um, and get these improvements. <coughs> Any new items for this discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We have four, three. I have, I have to abstain. I've been testifying here that. Ooh. We so are we are three, three, one. Is that a harmless one? Three, three, one. Three, three, one. Does that mean it, it loses? It means it loses. It fails, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I, I just negative? feel that since I'm making the presentation, I can no longer, I can't vote out. Mr. Chairman? Actually, you could, and you said that to the vote for okay. uh, If I could, I would change my vote. <coughs> I, I felt during that conversation it wasn't proper for me to do so. All right. We were scheduled to have a majority opinion and a minority opinion, a pro and a con written. David, you were going to write the pro, one you were going to write um, the con. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I, I see hers. Her so we'll yeah. present it that way and we'll present our vote. Okay, but we're... Um, you want to tweak my verbiage on it? So, just, you know, well, yes, probably, but I, well, well, I, don't, remember, I don't remember what you wrote, but, yeah. I, but I think we can just state our, our vote. All right, and I think what we'll do is we'll state that we voted 331, which is basically the time. Okay. okay. Are we going to be discussing Article 1, and should I move, or should I just sit here and... Um, I would ask the chairman of the capital planning to please step forward to discuss yes, article one. Don't, don't we want to do a four bar with the sheet that we have to go back? Oh, uh, we have to go back. Thank you. Uh, which was the article, which is article number 19. Thank you for your patience, Sandy. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to check down on the other way to find us. Sandy Slavin, Chair of Affordable Housing Trust. This is an article that was brought forward by the Affordable Housing Trust to work toward getting the, uh, what is referred to as the accessory apartment um, in town, get them, um, if they're pre-existing, Unpermitted, we're trying to get them um, identified and brought up to code. <clears throat> before any discussion happens, there was, um, when brought before the Board of Selectmen a couple weeks ago, there were a lot of questions as to which article the particular town uh, council, Jay Tallerman, was speaking to. Uh, one of the Board of Selectmen wrote directly to Jay Tallerman uh, asking him to confirm which of the two articles he reviewed. He came back and he said he talked to, he was referring to the one in the affordable accessory apartment program. I have his response. Um, he is suggesting that we hold this article, do not um, continue with it. He has some issues with um, some of the words on it including the statement of 40B, but until my committee meets and votes on it, I cannot do anything other than carry it forward um, as an article. Thank you, Mr. Chair, I'm a motion for favorable action. I'm not sure how it works. You want to discuss it? To... Oh, so, so move. Oh, she said it first. <coughs> Mrs. Kitsui. Mrs. Kitsui. Second. Discussion? Uh, Mrs. Kitsui. I'm a little confused. So it's it's the opinion of council that there's some wording problems. Um, <coughs> I'm just going to guess. I, I guess the short form of this in layman's terms is, is this have to do with rental property? Yes. As far as, um, I, I've heard this before, as far as the um, making sure like units are, are re-inspected, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, before they take in a new tenant. Is that the point of this? No. Nope. No. To answer, the answer is no. May I? Yes. These are you. These are apartments. These are apartments that are in someone's garage or in someone's cellar. Oh. That is not on anybody's radar. They are illegal, illegal. unpermitted apartments, ah. and we're trying to give them a chance through this uh, bylaw or this amnesty program a chance to bring it up to code. And, um, it's, and in doing so, Affordable Housing Trust was thinking it could use some of its funds to give them some financial assistance in putting out a correct access out of the cellar, as opposed to a bulkhead type thing. And uh, by doing, by giving them some financial assistance, it would be that they can be recorded as a 40B apartment. But right now they are illegal. And we figure there's about 50 to 60 around town. Okay, thank you. The through you to Sandy. Mm -hmm. You say you have to talk to your committee about this. So I have two questions. When will you be meeting with your committee? And secondly, given the opinion of council, what will your recommendation be? Our committee meets the second Thursday of a month at 4:30 downstairs. 
second Thursday, so we, we are well before town meeting. And the recommendation will be um, supporting the attorneys, the attorney decision that we would withhold. But I can't come, I can't state that until my committee makes that statement. Uh, perhaps I need some clarification on what I think I heard. I thought I heard that this would create a situation in which affordable housing could help people with non permitted apartments to provide access and bring themselves up to code. Uh, to that end, are these same people charging for these apartments? I assume they are collecting rent. Yeah, so if they were collecting rent, why would we give them money to help them? The attempt would be to make them legal apartments and to put them on our 40B inventory. Right now they're... Who's Chair McDonald's first? And again, you did this before because we did this on CPC. I have very little knowledge of what we're going with this, but it seems to me that unless the main dwelling was was uh, affordable housing, it would be difficult to put that that portion of the house. I don't know. You, you know what I mean? I it, it's kind of hard for me to think. Well, that's an affordable unit down here when the whole house is a 1.4 million dollar home. I, it's just difficult. Um, I, I don't think that, that, well, I don't want to, I, I still have a question. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't think that that would affect having an affordable and having a, 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 a an affluent home or whatever. I think the only thing that, that they're looking to gain by this is basically, like you said, they tried to rent now they're going to be trying to rent then. And at least we can make sure that people are not living in, in conditions that are substandard and are safe, particularly fire. And we can count them toward 40B, most importantly. So I think I like your article. And I hope you guys get it, get it worded right. Um, because people are going to have those units, whether they come through the amnesty or not. Your question was? Is it just that was my, that was my, uh, that was what I had to say. Mr. Conner, I didn't have a, I didn't have a question. I, I commend what you're trying to do, but basically what you're, you're getting at is you, these people have done this illegally. So you want to help the criminal? Is that what you're trying to say? I want to help the renter be safe. Yeah, but on the flip side of that, who is actually benefiting from that? Well, you believe the renter is or the landlord is? To answer? I mean, thank you. Okay, well, I answer. But I'm not done yet. Excuse me. I, I, don't like I don't see. If you know these apartments are real legal, then they should be shut down, not helped. That's where I'm going with it. Mr. Trudell? I'm struggling with the concept of giving money to bring something into, into compliance. Then I turn around and I say, what do I have a building inspector, a zoning board, and a board of health for? Thank you. End of my comments. That's just good to... <laughs> you just took my phone. That's it. It's going on the same track. That's exactly right. I also have a question. What's the source of funding for this? Um, there has, there are two principal. There, one principal. Sorry, we receive funds from um, Wareham Crossing, and we receive funds of five thousand dollars from 40B developers who have affordable units. If I believe zoning says if you're going to put a 40B development in. And five thousand dollars for each affordable unit goes before the affordable housing trust. I believe that is our source. There's two, where I'm crossing in that. Because my understanding, a certain amount of CPC funds go to the affordable housing trust as well. And you're saying none of those will be used. 
Correct, because this would not be a CPA um, task, uh, um, use of the funds. We have been uh, granted $60,000 from the afford from um, Community Preservation Act funds, but that money is not available for us to use until we had a project that is, val that is valid under CPA policy. Any other questions? So you're going to go back to your committee and suggest holding this? Or make a motion or suggest we will have a discussion and then we'll have a vote. Yes, okay. you have any idea? And, I, and I'm not a gambler by any stretch of the imagination, but do you have a feeling for that vote? I honestly, it would be a personal opinion, and I'm here as the chair. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion for favorable action. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Those opposed? Aye. Abstentions? No abstention? Zero six one. Thank you very much. Part of my assignment sheet, I have not assigned anyone to write our opinion on that. First item on the list was the defibrillators. Uh, capital planning voted to approve the defibrillators uh, through Mr. Trudeau. Went to the police department, got a list of all the needs. I believe they said they had 32 vehicles. 32 police cars. Police cars. Uh, four supervised vehicles. Vehicles. So they had a total need of four. That means it would be one in every vehicle that they have, including, I believe, two ATVs. And they end up with two spares. And two spares, correct. Um, and since the defibrillators basically, as David has mentioned earlier, are, will no longer be serviceable, or, or whatever parts are available now, that's it. Uh, the defibrillators at any time could become obsolete and not repairable. And probably that's one reason why they probably haven't offered it to anybody else, so they probably have very little value. Mm -hmm. Great article. Great article. Just go over all the items and we'll decide how we want to vote on it. Okay, my understanding is I believe you check clear they're going to break it out separately, that's all. Good. It's up to you. You may want to ask the moderator on that. I would hope, I would hope that they don't do this all as one thing because it make it difficult to pass. Okay. She's, she's back. 
Madam uh, moderator, the question will come up again. Will we divide question number one or what is going to happen? <coughs> I know you're charged with the motion, no. so I don't know how the motion is going to be written. My understanding is that the motion is going to be, the question has come up whether, how is it going to be funded? Mm -hmm. And that question has, to my knowledge, the question hasn't been answered. If it's going to come out of the meals tax for capital improvements or whatever, you know, then you might be able to divide it, but if it's a borrowing, then you'd have to do it as one article with a total because you're borrowing the total. But then we'd have to go through it similar to you would do your budget items. I would go through it line by line and ask if anybody wanted to hold on it. And, and my assumption would be that everyone would be held for discussion. Um, it's an issue I've been trying to work out with the town administrator and town council, and as of yet, I don't have an answer. I'm sorry. Um, I was hoping he'd be in tomorrow so that we could over this I have not I've, I've only seen the motions for about three articles so mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the motion is going to be I don't know if they're borrowing whether they're transferring or how they're funding mm -hmm. it and that would have a lot to do with how you would address the article. Mr. Chairman? Mrs. Brown? Would it be, would it be um, could I, I would like to propose to make some sort of a motion to, uh, when it comes to article one and um, I like to make a motion that FinCon takes the position that uh, we're not going to vote on anything until we know uh, what we have and can we afford to pay for this. Um, I think it's we would be remiss to go out and, and say, okay, let's get this when no one is telling us what we have available. Oh, are we going to borrow for this? What? We, we, we have no number. We have absolutely number, no numbers at all. And I would take the position that the FinCon would be, uh, it would not be the best interest of the FinCon to vote on this article. Mr. Trudeau, I, I respect my colleague's position. I believe that we owe it to the community to have a thorough discussion of these articles, of these items. And I believe that we need to hear it out. We need to hear what the capital planning voted. And I think we need to vote on them. If we want to put a caveat at the end that we do not feel comfortable with borrowing, considering what happened last year financially and where we may be, in spite of the town administrator's assurances that we're within our borrowing limits, then that should be part of our, our overall explanation. But I do believe that we owe the community the right to have heard through the capital planning chair and the finance committee what we think about the various items. Money aside, you could vote no, but I think we need to hear and well, vote on I, I would Please, Mr. McDonald. Not. Nothing personal. Nothing personal. There you go. Instead of for me. I appreciate it. Through you, Mr. Chair. I've stated in the past, and I'm not going to do a long speech because I know he doesn't have his gavel and he will throw his pen, so I'll make it as short as I can. I am not willing to go back to town meeting and suggest anything other than no on these articles. We have no financial information, and we're playing. We're, this is a financial risk on our part, and they're looking to us. We have to be the... I don't know. Responsible. Conservative, conservative. We have to be conservative on this, and the people are looking to us for advice. They're not looking for us whether or not we think it's a good article because of safety or whatever. They're looking to us for advice on whether to vote for this. And as a citizen, and as a 28-year veteran of this field, I'm telling you now, if you come to me with no numbers, I cannot vote for it. You cannot open your checkbook and write a check unless you're a millionaire, which we're not without knowing what your balance is. We don't know what our balance is. And, and it's as simple as that for me. Any other, Mrs. Brock? We, we, let everyone speak one, at least one time first, and then we'll go back around. <coughs> Mr. Brock? Oh, oh, what, I, what I wanted to contribute, and I'm, you're, you're absolutely, that's a fiscal responsible thing to do. I 
I mean, you don't, I just don't see how um, we can go into town meeting and tell these folks, hey, look, capital planning studied this, and we want to do this, and we want to do that. But we don't know how much money we have. We, we just don't know. And, and it's a known fact that we're over budget on several articles that have been approved by town meeting, and they've gone over their budget, whether it be. We don't have those facts. Yeah. I mean, you can't say. Well, we don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. That's okay, my point. I would agree with that. But you can't say about Mr. Paulson. Yeah, Last week, I had asked the town administrator to provide us with information as to how often the defibrillators are used by the police. I don't have an answer to that question. I, if I might just continue just a bit further. Ms. Brock, my colleague here, said she had talked to 11 policemen. I'll, I'll accept that. I only talked to one, and his response was the same as what she apparently thought. They're not, they are not being used. Therefore, my conclusion, absent any other information from the town administrator, is that if they're not being used, why are we spending the money? While I appreciate my colleagues' concern with financial matters before this committee, I can share them. However, <coughs> Since most of you were not in attendance at the capital planning meeting yesterday, you don't know what the capital planning even had for recommendation. So if you don't want to discuss it because you don't want to deal with money, fine. But I think that you owe it to yourselves to appreciate the work that capital planning put in and voted on these articles because you might be surprised at some of the answers. It might affect your decision on, on numbers. If Mr. McCloud, Mr. McCloud, trying to go I, I, I welcome what the capital plan. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just stating for you know there's there's an emotional issue and there's a <laughs> there's a financial issue and that's the responsible issue and then there's an emotional issue and 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 just cannot again financial risk that keeps coming up in my mind and, and I, but I'm willing to listen I, I just and there are some other issues with the way the article is written especially when it comes to the school buses so I we'll get into that but I, I look forward to it I, I, I'm going to listen with open open ears Mrs. Brown. to my colleague down the end if, if anyone respects the, the, the work of any committee that has been formed in the time that I have been on the FinCom, it is the capital planning. We respect each and everything that you've come to the table with. And we know that you guys have gone out and studied and looked at things. And if you told me we needed it, we need it. I'm just asking, where's the money? Show us the money. Could I respond, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. The fact of the matter is to all of you, Capital planning has serious reservations about our ability to fund this. We have asked through the town administrator for the town treasurer, treasurer to appear before us. Thanks. We know what happened last year when we emasculated the health care fund. Now we're talking about selling our receivables. With if we didn't have serious concerns on how to fund this, we'd be wrong, and we do. Your concerns are well placed, and, and there's nothing. You can't hurt my feelings in this because, believe me, you're expressing the very concerns that the capital plan is, is concerned. You get the chance, realistically, to say, we don't think we should go forward, we should, based on those financial things. We're trying to deal with the question of go forward or not, even though we are tasked with the subtask of finding ways to finance it. The question here before us and your concerns are the capital planning's concerns of how do we pay for it, how do we fund it, and they're serious questions. Mr. Slade. David has answered most of what I was going to base refer to. Uh, we have two phases that we do. One is to uh, provide a list to the town administrator of 
items we feel are priority going down the line as best we can. Uh, we tend to, at least for the last two years, gone for public safety, employee safety wherever possible. Uh, because we have such a huge number of things we need, we can't obviously begin to even come close to touching most of them. Um, everybody needs to understand that in the first year we were really active with this, we had $2.5 million, we funded $1.5, so we're already $1 million in the hole going forward. Every year, your, your capital requirements don't disappear, they don't decrease, they increase, because that means everything else is a year older. So there's wear and tear, with, no matter what it is, building everything. Uh, this year, we had put forth at Springtown meeting 1.8 million, which is really reduced from 2.2. We took some things and moved it. And we're only going to be funding about $400,000 worth of that 1.8. So effectively, we're $2.5 million in the hole in two years plus the increase. So as far as it goes, that's one of the problems. We have a wish list, which we need, but the problem has been what we can afford. As David said, the one piece that we have not got is we've been asking about financial information. We know what we can borrow because the town can borrow. The problem we have is can we pay back what we borrow? Our committee is tasked with suggesting to the town administrator by state description of how you finance things, how you purchase it, lease whatever. That goes with our recommendation. Our recommendation is two parts. You know, we've not been able to do this up until now because we haven't had enough information to make it. But I consider a, a recommendation that basically is based on fact. We've asked for the town, the treasurer, Mr. Foster, to come before us. Our next meeting, I think, is October 13th? Yes. Okay, and we want to sit and talk about, we're not concerned about what we can borrow. We're concerned <coughs> if we borrow money and borrow more money, can we actually make the payments? Can we make our principal and interest payments? Are we at a point where we only make interest payments and roll over the principal? We don't know. We have to have that information in order to do this. But we, we have to first say, okay, this item comes before us. Do we support or approve the item? The next step is, can we afford it? We, have, we make a report to town meeting. Our report has to be twofold. What we're bringing forth and whether we can pay for it. It's, it's, it's our fiduciary responsibility to give that to the town. So what you're asking for, we will hopefully be able to supply you with and you'd be able to do it on your own as well, because the FinCom has the same responsibility. Unfortunately, you both overlap quite a bit. Um, I empathize with the situation that we're in here, but the fact of the matter is two things. One is we have to come to a decision, okay? We have to make a vote here. We're out of time. Um, the other thing is, approval at town town meeting floor of these particular items does not guarantee that they're going to get bought. Okay. We know that there are many things that were approved at town meeting that were not purchased, okay, that were put off, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I think it is our responsibility, if we don't have these numbers, and it doesn't look like we're going to anytime soon, um, that we keep track of what's going on. Right? Whether it's constant meeting with the town administrator, et cetera, et cetera, before you know he goes forward with these purchases, I think we need to prioritize the seven items that we have, and we need to take a vote on them, whether they are necessary or not necessary at this point. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Brown. I just have one other comment. I I think that we owe it to the people of Wareham to put the town administrator on the spot and say, will we, if we pass what, what he's proposing to get, will we have a balanced budget this year? Have to well, exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. Mr. McDonald. Can we, can we, let's move on and please talk about the items because I think that's going to okay. help. Item number two. Oh, Mr. Trudeau. Do you want Are we going to be allowed to ask questions at the end of the various things or do we want to go along? Well, I think we should do it going along. But before we start anything, I would look for only. Uh, the chair is looking for a motion to divide the question stating our approval or disapproval of each proposed item as follows. So and then list the item. So I'll move to have a second. 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 I have a motion on the floor. Discussion. <coughs> Let's start with item A. Generate. I'm sorry, the. He needs a vote. Um, no. We, 
Oh, okay. I thought you were going to go ahead and break it up. We'll go through it. As I said, as follows. Okay. Second item is the generator. Could I ask a question? Sure. Go ahead. Um, I believe Mr. Trudell at the capital planning meeting made a note that <coughs> that the defibrillators at twenty-one hundred dollars could be considered an expense item. Yes, that was one thing. However, the administration feels that they are part of a vehicle, and he wants to carry them as a capital item. So it's within our power to look at them as an expense item rather than as a capital item. That was that was brought up in the discussion because we had discussed that a year ago when these when they originally came up. But you know, again, you know, unfortunately, when they bought police vehicles and buying vehicles, they could have at that time included them as a whole package with their equipment, but they didn't. I have to be recognized. Mr. McDonald. Actually, that was one of my questions, if you remember correctly, as well. But I believe there's mass law that supports. When you're buying, oh. yeah, well, it's an initial purchase, if you will, uh, thing, or you or you're building something, or there, there is a there's a way around it, and, and I'm not. My question was answered. If you replace them, they become expense items. They're being replaced. Well, I mean, if you take whatever's capitalized, are they once now capitalized? You know. So, so anyway, have, my point is that if you buy them in bulk like this. Go and they have a life expectancy expectancy of ten years. You can put them in as a capital, but when those tear up, they have to be expensed as you as you replace them. I'll, I'll find the mass law. That, that would also be my understanding. It, it, the thing is, is they were being even if they were being replaced one at a time. You run into the problem of talking about pulling out an entire program and putting a whole new program in, and at that point, it could be. Taken as a capital item under mass law. Yeah. Um, we basically we voted to go ahead with the as they with the defibrillators as a capital item. We did have we did bring up the question of expense versus you know a capital item, but we basically thought that it would be a capital item. Mm -hmm. Would you give us the vote as you do each item? Well, any comments on uh, any actually? Other comments? You might have that in your copy. I don't have it in mine. If you want, you can. Mr. Well, would you like to state this? The, the Capital Planning Committee on the vote of defibrillators voted by favorable zero zero. Mm -hmm. May I can record its vote on this item at this time? No, don't be saying that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do this. Pardon? We'll just hear it all. Yes, let's go. We're, we're going to break them the items down. Yeah. No, but let's hear the whole thing before I. No, do we? No, 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 the defibrillator signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Mm -hmm. Three, four. Generator? Generator. Uh, generator was a little misleading initially. Uh, <coughs> we were under the impression the police department needed to uh, increase capacity of the generators at the facility because of the new uh, Radio communication system, TVs, everything there. They, that was that $325,000 program that was done a year ago. That was just recently finished. Uh, the generator, when the hurricane came in, they had to kick off because of the power. The existing generator in the facility was not sufficient to run everything. They had to go, I believe, to the Warham Fire District and, and borrow a, a backup generator that they had to bring over there. Uh, it turns out that the generator that was bid on, we, we saw the paperwork at our meeting on Tuesday. Uh, and it's not a backup generator, it's actually a complete new generator replacing what exists in the building now. So this is a full generator that will handle the needs there. The vote of the capital plan committee is five zero zero. Any further discussion? Mr. McDonald? No, I we put in a new generator at work. It was a gas, natural gas one which it works very well. Obviously, uh, we're not a police station, so we end up spending around six thousand dollars as opposed to forty thousand dollars. However, we do have some heavy, heavy equipment, especially bolted, whatever it is, wattage, voltage equipment, 
but it, it runs what it needs to run and it runs. I, I don't know. I, this is the only one that gives me trouble more than anyone else is this one. Through the chair, if you'd like a minute, Larry. I believe David has the actual I mean, tape order from the here. No, it's okay. I, <coughs> from South Shore generator. Yeah, we have it. It wasn't just the generator itself, I believe. So it's, it's the wiring. It's the wiring. Yeah, it's wiring. wiring. Yeah, it takes a lot because they have to wire it. They have to do ventilation and everything else that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I priced a uh, six kilowatt uh, natural gas generator for the house, and the generator itself was seven thousand dollars. By the oh. time I get done, it was thirteen. With wire and everything. You must have got a heck of a deal. No, it's a, I, bought, I looked at a Siemens, and either Siemens or a Kohler, or the, the three major brands. I think this one might be a, a Kohler, if I'm not mistaken. That doesn't break it down. It does, actually. There's a bill uh, from South Shore Generator. It's down to what the 40,000 consists of. It talks about all, <coughs> all the accessories that went into it. Um, into the 400 amp. Generator along with the one minute It talks about replacing the uh, unit, reinstalling the unit, existing mover and ductwork, delivery gas, electrical insulation, exhaust, catalyst, uh, transfer switches, some insulation, electrical gas and a standard startup warranty initiation that comes to their bid of 40,000. I cannot answer to you whether they were bids. It's, uh, that's fine. It, it's a local firm that's right. It's Thank you. very liable. Yeah, so I it's mean, also 400 amps. Your home is 230 broken down. A 400 amp unit is usually three or four times the cost. Well, the, the, the word bid, did this go out to bid? seem to me it's on the level in terms of expense that it would have to have been. Let's see, we don't have a purchasing department, do we? <laughs> uh, we have a personnel that. department. And the town administrator can put out a bid, he can approve the bid, and he can approve payment of the bid. Well, I think we've discussed this issue before. <laughs> might be a source model. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Uh, it, also also goes in, it also goes out to State Street vendor list as well. That's it. I, and that's the key on this. There's also, first off, this powers three communications consoles, I believe, as well. Two of which are used on an ongoing basis. The third is only used in case of emergency. Mm -hmm. And everyone's centralized into the police department. Um, and their experience in the hurricane, yes, they did have a breakdown, but they also found that they were having significant power problems in maintaining all of the communications, uh, as well as the function of the police department, which prompted this, that's what prompted this. Yeah. And, uh, that position has been stated several times by different individuals. Any discussion? No. Anyway, you need help, you need help. I don't want to go. I don't want to go off topic, but yes. I have a, a friend that I go to when I when I struggle with issues like this, and, and, I, and I consider them a very, very close friend. Also, someone who can uh, bring me back to reality very quickly. And so I went over what I felt like my problem, what the issue was, and, and how I felt, how I should address it at town meeting. And they said, "Well, it's simple." Would you go out there and tell someone to go ahead and write a check if they didn't have any money in there or they didn't know how much the money they had in there? I said, no, I wouldn't do that. He said, then that's your answer. So, that's I'm, I'm sorry. I just, that's that's all. Question. It, 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 it justifies Several it. times over. Thanks. Uh, we have a vote on the, you know, that will support the generator. Uh, again, remember this is for emergency services. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-2. Here's the parking program. Parking program. Uh, parking program, we actually uh, saw at least the capital plan for the first time on Tuesday, the actual breakout of what it was. We originally thought it might have been for a study, more or less. It's actually for Breakout that we have the $60,000 of the actual system, 
which would be for the odds of pier. I'm not sure who's going to cover any other areas at this time, although they were talking about upper parking areas somewhere else. It wasn't clear whether it covered them all or not, but it was included here. Uh, there was another uh, basically $15,000 in different expenses, etc., to go with this whole program. Um, as we've said before, this item was not in our in our list anywhere, obviously. Um, when we discussed it, the, we went back to the same thing we've been harping on for a while, is what is the plan for this? Uh, is there going to be dedicated income? Obviously, the community events, you know, gets 40% of the parking fees. Is this taken into effect? Because the question was, can you sit there and cap it? And you really can't take money away from it. Uh, a, a basic uh, act that's been done in 2005 and with Jimmy Potter. And you can't just tell people you can't have that any more than a set amount. There were a lot of questions about the money. Uh, is the money going to be dedicated to repair and maintain the pier in the Chapter 91 rules that's coming up? And there's just questions of how, how much will the police department be paid to run this program? You know, what happens with the revenues versus expenses? There was no, there was no plan really put together that had taken all these items into consideration for a final decision. So based on that where there was no plan, I believe the vote was zero five zero. 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 Correct. We did not support it. We asked them to come back at Springtown meeting basically with a full plan that we could, you know, go ahead and approve something that had substance. Um, and we went over this the other day, it showed significant um, income without even adding in police ticketing. Now I know that the community events will get some of the money, but the community events doesn't get any of the money from the police ticketing, which would also be a big benefit in uh, income for the town. Um, Mr. Paulson had mentioned when he talked to Plymouth that the income was almost 50% uh, ticketing versus, you know, the other income from the meters themselves. So it showed money without ticketing, which another town said was another 50%. I can't see how you'd want to put off anything that's going to make the town money. Even if we give community their fair share of the ticketing money, we're still going to get a lot more from police tickets and all that. I, I, I'm sorry, it's a win, 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 win. So I'm far. There is additional income for people who buy a ticket for an hour and you know, use a half an hour at least. Right. So that's the positive side. The okay. bad side is yes. once you put something like this in and there's a guaranteed percentage to a particular event, it was suggested oh. that then they could go and use that money to buy fireworks. Well, the problem is there is no plan. The only plan is to put it in there and give their 40% away and gobble up the additional revenue. They haven't addressed the question of the legislation that's in place. We talked about that at this finance committee last year in May. And the result to date is no action on the part of the administration to deal with that particular issue. So that plan means whatever we make for comments in May and how to deal with this issue and come back to us was disregarded because our concerns aren't there. Until there's some way in which we say we're going to allocate those funds until we show that we're going to put some money aside for the onset peer repair, it'll be another ambulance fund. We'll take the money in and it will disappear. All we're asking for the administration, at least from the capital planning side of the point of view, is show me a plan. I don't think that's unreasonable. Mr. Spaven? We've never, on, on looking at this, we never, we never questioned whether this would be a producer of revenue or not. And, we, and we've basically looked at the actual revenue on the pier and questioned whether or not we're really collecting all we should be collecting. And the system probably would improve that as well. That's not the issue. The issue with us is strictly, okay, we know we're going to generate revenue. We don't know what the expenses are going to be. We don't know how the money is going to be distributed. All we ask for is, and anybody coming forward, when you would ask the same, what is the plan of how this is going to work? If, if you sit there and say, well, well, we'll work on this as we go along, it should make everybody very nervous. 
you know, you can't run it. This is still a business. You have to run it with the idea you know where everything is coming in. It has to go out. It's not very much to ask, and we don't have that information, so we can support it. Mr. Paulson? If, if I understand this correctly, and I think I do, on one hand, we see that it can be, and I think we're all in agreement on this, that there are various sources of revenue that could accrue to the town. And I think we all applaud that. If I understand my esteemed colleague here on my left, we've asked the administration for information concerning certain aspects of what will be done with the monies that come in going forward. And my question is, did you get an answer? I mean, are we going to have an answer from the administration if that's where the address the question was directed before town meeting so we can go forward with this? Did you answer the question? To answer the question. Regrettably, the town administrator was called for the meeting and was unable to return. So it's out of order. No, no sir. Mr. Slade. Uh, we, we, again, because this is the first time we've dealt with this with numbers and everything, at our meeting, uh, basically, Derek Sullivan was standing in for the town administrator, which doesn't mean anything. Like the bottom line is we requested through Derek that we get some more information, which he said he would provide us. And we told him at that point here, if we have more information, we can go back and look at it. And when we make our report at town meeting, if the information basically meets the, board, the committee's satisfaction, we can make our report, and even though our vote's there. This sounds like a much bigger issue than a, a, a weak issue. This sounds like this is going to take some research and some time to, to get the information back to, to capital planning. So I, revenue is great, but. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed. Um, <laughs> well, uh, on two fronts, the, the fact that there is no plan, I'm very disappointed that um, this will be put aside for a springtime meeting, won't be implemented for the summer of tourism. This is something <coughs> we do want to do. We all agree that we want to do this, yes. but we need to have a plan of action. Um, <sighs> I think the plan can be worked out. I understand the legislation problems. That all has to be defined. Um, and the expenses for, for deterioration of the pier, et cetera. Um, this certainly could be a revenue source for fixing those problems, OK? Even if it's never used for anything else but that. Um, so I, I personally would support it going <coughs> forward thinking that we could work this out, whether it's before town meeting or by the summer. Uh, I would like to see this supported. I would say this is not new. Mm -hmm. This came before us once before for emergency funds. And we said we would not support it for emergency funds. And it was only for one parking lot. It was for the onset parking lot. And we said at that time we totally supported all the revenue all three <coughs> were available to us, the several wins that were available to us, all right? And how far have we gotten between that point and this time as to a plan? And that's my hesitation. If we hear there will be a plan, a plan will come up, issues will be addressed, and it comes up to the final implementation, and we're even then not anywhere close to a plan. I. This is a golden opportunity, as, you, no, as my he, colleague on the right side. We asked, him, we asked him to, to break it down of, of more of um, what it was. And he did that. He gave us what everything cost and all that. That's what we asked him for when it came from the emergency um, funds in the spring. He gave us that. He didn't give us a plan about spending the money. That's not what we asked for at first. We asked for a breakdown of the system, the installation, and all that, in which we got right here in the paperwork. Okay, we didn't ask him for, you know, any of the plan about where the money and everything was going to go. So I think when we asked where he gave it, he gave it to us. Okay, I just think it's just too much money to, to put it up, put it up, put it up. Is it workable? I think we can work it out. I just think it's too much of an opportunity not to try to work it out as we go forward. We're losing too much. Any further comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Fourth, I'm sorry, fourth grade. Fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs>
Prisoner transport vehicle. Uh, prisoner transport vehicle. Uh, this is based on the need if the uh, West Square Hill courthouse closes, basically. Uh, what we have running now, even though the vehicle is old, you know, because of the short distance between the police station and the courthouse, they're more than able to get by. We had put this, well, not decided, but a similar item on our notes for a one or two year pushback because it wasn't considered a critical item or a safety issue at this particular time. So based on the, the time frame of when the court could close, would close, and everything else, we basically uh, voted no on this particular item. Zero, four, zero. All right. Mr. This is when we get into the discussion about trapping us into a number, and I believe our town moderator told us that you cannot substantially change the the numbers in an article, and 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 this there lies where we get in the problem. And I believe the school committee came out and and agreed with something I I've been saying is that money's cheap right now, and for us to lock ourselves into any type of a lease is a mistake. What should have happened here is they put in the total number and then decide later how they want to do it, if they wanted to do it by lease or whatever. So that's another reason that I would not support this article is because you cannot substantially change it and it almost guarantees that we're gonna be locked into a lease to get this vehicle. Mr. the for your information, the request and supporting documentation indicates that the actual cost of the vehicle would be fifty-five thousand dollars. Is so that the motion? That's no, it's part of the supporting documentation. If, if they bought it versus leasing it, but to your point, if you spread the lease out over three years, it comes to sixty-four thousand two hundred dollars. Well, there you go. That's mm -hmm. I think yeah, that yeah. supports your position. Well, thank you, Paul. The uh, courts and various jurisdictions have started to use <coughs> for the, uh, uh, instead of bringing the prisoner to the court, it's done remotely. And therefore you don't have police overtime involved. There are different, what I'm trying to get at here is there are different ways perhaps to do things as opposed to saying, well, we're gonna have to transport if we have to transport people to a remote book, uh, uh, court or arraignment in particular. We ought to be looking as a suggestion. We ought to be looking at different ways of doing things as opposed to saying, well, we're gonna to have to put them in a van and move them 60 miles and have the attendant overtime. We've got, there are other possibilities and other courts are doing just that. And for that reason, and in fact, the judges are in favor of it in part because it makes their job safer. Uh, well, my, my only comment is that we're, I mean, there's no guarantee that this courthouse is going to close. It's, it's just, it's all <coughs> conjecture at this point, whether it does or it doesn't. I think we're just putting the cart before the horse here. Um, spending money we don't have to spend right now. Um, and Mr. Boston says maybe there is an alternative. So. No, no, no. All those in favor of the prison transport vehicle, so I'm saying aye. Who's asking? Pardon? He's going to capital plan. Oh, I'm sorry. Capital plan. Capital planning on the prison transport vehicle. Zero, four, zero. Which would say? Mm -hmm. That's the vote. It failed. Well, somebody had to meet their meet. Oh, okay. They actually run longer than we did. Go bigger. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Aye. There's a six of us now. Zero, six, zero. Okay. Four wheel uh, drive vehicle. Four wheel drive vehicle is really, it's a uh, sergeant supervision, supervisor vehicle that goes out. Um, <coughs> again, this vehicle was on our list, not for this year. We had pushed it back a year or so. Again, they're, they're, we felt that even though they do have an older vehicle running, it doesn't run high, it doesn't have high use per se. And they, I believe they have one, possibly two supervisor vehicles that have come in the last year or so. And we thought this could be basically pushed back a little bit because it wasn't really a critical need. So we did not vote for that also. To support for that, that. The, I asked the question if 
the three quarter tons were being taken. I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the uh, supervisor four wheel drive vehicles were being taken home by the supervisors. The chief informed me that these particular vehicles were not going home. However, there are nine vehicles that do go home. Chief, two lieutenants, sergeant uh, detectives, three detectives, and two canine officers. But these particular four wheel drive vehicles do not go home, according to the chief. The uh, Capital Planning Committee voted 0 4 0. Just, just want to reiterate again, we're locked into a lease number here as opposed to a total value, that, and, and that's that's another concern. Yes, you may. Uh, if you look at the, the lease, it works out to 58320 If you look at the documentation for it, uh, it says $50,000. There you go. Any further discussion? Well, the vehicle, all those in favor, aye. All those in favor, signify by saying no. 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 EMS ambulance. EMS ambulance rebuild <coughs> was put on. Um, we technically really need to replace an ambulance. Uh, the rebuild, the hundred fifty thousand dollars. We had a little questions because one of our members, uh, Mr. Kluber, is uh, one fire chief and stuff that had some experience in this area. And we looked at this a year ago, talking about ways to lengthen the life of an ambulance to 10 years overall by after a five-year period of cha changing of the chassis and rewiring, et cetera. And the price at that time that he got was, I believe, 75 to 80,000. Um, I spoke with uh, David Evans uh, actually after our meeting. I have to run into him. And I asked him where he got the price of 150. He said it came from Brewster, where they were taking a vehicle and changing it over. And getting it done, but including wiring, including taking the whole insides of the of the box out and change it. So uh, again, we basically went ahead and agreed to go ahead with this, but we just had some reservations about the actual price because 150. Um, the current chassis that they use on the ambulances that we had a bit of 214 this past year, uh, Ford has decided not to make that chassis available with a diesel anymore. And therefore, they have to move up one class, and now the price of an ambulance is approximately two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars from two fourteen, because of this. Not, you have a basically a V ten motor instead of a diesel motor. So you don't get the lifespan, etc. So uh, again, because this is at one fifty, we can't say you really we should go for a, a brand new unit because it's not in the article, but it's it's awful close. It, if it comes out that way, <coughs> if. Uh, our member Kluber is correct, and it's 80 or 85, then it's reasonable to, and I believe we voted on that. We voted on that for zero. 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 The, the town administrators asked for mitigation with the commercial side, and that probably is not eminent. However, our situation with the ambulances does, does not improve on a daily basis. In 1999, it's, it's too old. <clears throat> we believe that putting money in for Lego is the correct thing to do. As Mr. Kluber points out, you need three ambulances to keep two up. And right now, where I think we're running on two, and the, the 1991, 1999 one needs several thousand dollars worth of repairs, one way or the other, whether it ends as a new ambulance or it ends as a retail, the community has to take action. As my Ms. Catulli has pointed out, uh, we are losing revenue to other towns because of this situation. And it's not going to get better until we either rebuild or get a new ambulance. Mr. Can we identify 
the revenue, or does it just go into the general fund? Uh, and that's the question. I'm Excuse sorry. Question? Yes. Sorry. It My goes Steve into Collins. the general fund. H however, it is identifiable on your on your town. Um, I'm sorry. The, the I'm like, what I'm thinking of the. Financial report. It is identifiable. It's as the EMS revolving account, okay? But it has a profit <coughs> at the end of the year, okay? And that's what you need to look at. Um, it's not really accurate, okay? In in the fact that we weren't good attendance of it is my point, right. okay? Um, it's a business, just like the water pollution control facility, okay? Expenses for these kinds of things were not attended to. Okay, so in that regard, for them to get a capital item to replace something, they have to come to the town and ask for it. Okay, even though they are really kind of running a business. All right, um, the revolving account, like I said, does show a profit at the end of the year, but you're not looking at these other items. They've got to come back and ask for them, and I don't think that was good management on the part of the town. But that's just a point. Paulson. At the last meeting, when this subject came up, I raised the question as to changes on the Medicare funding, which apparently is the major source of funding for the ambulance services. I hear profit. If there's a profit, that's fine. But if it's coming from Medicare, and Medicare is under duress at the current time, and my understanding <coughs> that, that program of funding for ambulance services for towns and cities and municipalities is going to be cut significantly. And I raised the issue, and I don't know that we've got an answer as to where that particular program stands and how it would affect our ambulance service and the profitability of it. To thank you, Mr. Chairman, first to Mr. Paulson. The question whether Medicare payments are going to change or not is a valid question. However, that leads to the question is should the town be in the ambulance service or not? And I, I, I don't wish to go any further than, than that. But the question I do have, Mr. to the chair, to the town moderator, I'm asking for a memory test. Only if it's on the moderator. What is that? What is this fund <coughs> originally set as a revolving account, or was it just set up and we say that it's a revolving fund? Without putting myself in jeopardy, the best that I can remember originally when the ambulance was established. You have to remember back then, the town had its own fire department, so the EMS came under the, the town's fire department. Mm -hmm. And it was set up, I believe, as an enterprise fund. I believe it was originally voted as an enterprise fund. How it transferred into a revolving fund, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it just, at a future meeting, turned into a revolving fund, but and again, I, I'm just going by memory, and it goes back to the 70s, so but I believe it was originally an enterprise fund. That's how it was established. As I said, it was a memory test. <laughs> Mr. McDonald? And this is, this is, you can't, I, I believe, and this is just from reading the enterprise fund accounting, you just can't simply go from an enterprise fund to not an enterprise fund. And, but I would be more apt to support this article if it was an enterprise fund, because then, similar to the sewer and similar to the, and even though the Harbor Master is not an enterprise fund, it, it acts that way. You, you can readily identify the revenue, you can readily do that. It's just easier for me to see it as a paying for itself, as opposed to, here we go again, so. Uh, I'm going to attempt in some way to answer two questions and maybe one. Uh, to, to Mr. Paulson's question about Medicare, um, one of the things, first off, Medicare payments have been dropping for all services, okay? Medicare has said that they're reducing payments for all services, okay? Um, the other part of that is um, EMS 
charges, their billing company charges what they call Medicare base. Okay. In other words, whatever Medicare allows for that service, that's what they're allowed to charge for it. Um, however, if you are, you know, you, you, your insurance happens to be Blue Cross Blue Shield or Harvard Pilgrim or whatever, whatever their allowable is, is what their service charges Usual for customer. it. Okay? And I will tell you that in my experience, our EMS does a wonderful job of getting their, their payments. Okay? They do try to do that. However, there is an awful lot of free rides too. Okay? And that is part of providing that service in the town of Wayneham. I mean, we have visitors that come here during the summertime, year-round, whatever the story is. Um, and, and we have our low income that just cannot pay for it. Okay? Um, and that is a service that we are giving to them to secure their, their safety and their well-being, et cetera. Um, it is my opinion that we need to do this. This was bad management on the part of the town and not seeing these needs prior to now. Um, they not only provide coverage for this town, but they also provide coverage for Carver, Bourne, Marion, um, in conjunction with those town services um, that provide service back. And um, I can't say enough about what they do as being the best. They really are the best. All right. We give back to other towns a lot more than they give to us. Um, and they need this. That's all I have to say. Mr. McDonald. Oh, you're giving that look. No, I, I think of, out of all of them, this is the one that is the closest from, from my standpoint because it is a revenue generator. And if we don't do it, we're not going to generate mm -hmm. revenue. That's right. This is this is the one that I say, you know, maybe it doesn't pay for itself, but it pays for something. And if we don't have it, we're further in the hole. That's the one that I support more than anything else. And yes, they do a wonderful job. So. One of the other items that has come up is uh, it does not take much to knock an ambulance out of service. The repairing bills can be very small, but the time that it takes to do the repair and have it re-inspected by the state, mm -hmm. all right, can make it a significant loss of opportunity <coughs> cost of loss the revenue. You lose a great deal. I think one of our ambulances, correct me if I'm wrong, was out of service for almost three weeks for six a six thousand dollar paint job. Uh, yeah, repair to repair to the woman who had eroded on the on the body. So it's only a couple thousand. It was a gasket dollars. problem and very small dollars. Small dollar amount. Very small dollar amounts. The very small minimal repairs are taking our agencies out of service. So the rebuild addresses that issue for at least one of the ambulances. Okay. Any further discussion? We take this to a vote then all in favor of the refurbishment of the ambulance. Everybody saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seven zero zero. Enterprise. Twelve thousand pound girl. I'll make this short and sweet. Um, I'm not going to go into any details. It's been beat up so many times as everybody understands it. We're, we're basically rec we basically went ahead and voted to uh, recommend the seven buses they want to buy for now. And it would be as a capital lease, so it could be assumed uh, later on. We basically did this with the, with the uh, provision that come spring town meeting, an actual plan would be brought forth uh, whether it be an operational lease or whether it's going to be something where they have provisions for replacing the buses in a, in, in, you can't do 20 at one time because you know seven years later whatever it is they're talking about 10 years with an average lifespan of five years of the plan uh, and we basically talked again about setting up the committee which was you know the school superintendent the town administrator chairman of the board of selectmen uh, chairman of the school committee Chairman of the FinCon, 
and the capital planning chair was strictly advisory to, to funnel information into the group and they would come to, they would basically come to town meeting with a plan uh, to not do anything at all uh, is not a good thing because we know we have 13 buses that are that at cost, I think it was $70,000 repairs last year alone. And to at least replace seven of the 13, you know, it, at least it's something, it's, it's, yes, it's a Band-Aid, it's not a fix, it's not a plan, but at this point here, we basically go, that we go ahead with the seven, but come Springtown meeting, there has to be a plan because we could not basically sit there and vote for anything else unless there's a plan going forward. It's not a good answer, but it's the best we can supply. The board voted four zero zero, and we had much debate on that. Uh, I took our message of trying to have a committee and having a decision. I took our message of the meeting to capital plan. I do know one of our members had some serious concerns that seven wouldn't solve the problem. But the question put to that person was, give me a better alternative. And they had no answer to it. And, and that is the answer. It, give me a better alternative. <laughs> For you, because I know he's looking directly at me. Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> The, the problem I have with this is you're putting the cart before the horse. First you say, here, we're going to give you seven bucks and now come up with a plan. Well, does that guarantee it? I, I think you have to build the amendment that you're going to, to do that. But still, it doesn't guarantee it's going to get done. We heard the chairman of the school board tell us, don't do this right now. We can do it in the spring, but just have a plan for it. And then we can attack it with a long-term plan. Also, Harkin wants back to that comment that probably is going to make the chairman just very tired of hearing it. You're locked into a lease. Money is cheaper. You go out and get it now and, and get a low interest loan for that low interest debt, whatever you want to call it. And, and we're locked into a lease. Once again, we're locked into that, that number. And I just, I don't like being locked in that number. I think you should have come forward with the total amount and then decide. So again, you know, where all alternatives are not there. Our understanding is that the leases will be assumable capital leases. And this is only a one year band aid, very dirty band aid. Yes. The idea being that as the plan comes up, it'll probably take a second year to get the plan in place. But all they get is the seven bus, and there's no second seven, no third seven, okay. no fourth seven, et cetera. And the problem is, is as we stated, because the repair that are having to be done on some of the buses. One of the buses is almost out of service. It's $13,000 by itself, I'll believe it. All right, and you know, if we do our bus count, we have a lot of uh, dead buses sitting in the yard, et cetera. The, you know, the reason for doing this is to make sure they have safety throughout the remainder of the year. Right? And they have to be some of the leases, and the, the leases uh, at this point would be at a lower interest rate, so that is going to go up as well. Which yeah, yeah, we can have lots of discussions but um, they would be very desirable leases. So the other side is can we afford to bond seven buses and only for 10 years, especially if, again, we're looking at the potential of operating leases, et cetera. Uh, this is sort of the cheapest, cheapest dirtiest way out, uh, but it, it is a solution for a very serious problem that exists right now. Any heard the chairman and the, the school superintendent say, I would rather go forward with a plan as opposed to doing this now and then having to come back. So I heard the chairman. Okay, well, okay, well, let me go backwards and I apologize to the chairman. But here's chairman. the big thing. We all agree that they should be go forward. They should go forward and they should develop a plan. The problem is when we give them these buses, maybe they decide not to do it. Well, how do we penalize that? Is there a penalty phase in this? Because obviously, how do you penalize them? You're giving them seven buses to play with, so now they don't feel the sense of necessity now, or they don't come up with a plan, and, and this is what we got, seven buses. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'll answer as best I can. First off, the uh, school superintendent came to our meeting on Tuesday and basically asked us that he would, he would further he get the seven for now because he really doesn't want to have nothing because they are concerned about the issue. 
So that's where we were there. That was part of our discussion. Our, our comments at the end of our meeting, when we finally beat this to death again, was that come spring, if there's not something there, we are not going to bring forth, at least with a recommendation, to town meeting, any new buses. Well, that's the penalty phase. So we, we, don't, we, we both are advisory committees. I mean, we clearly do what we do, but what you do is you go before a town meeting and say, there's a chance to fix this, and if they don't fix it, they don't fix it. You know, I don't know. It's, it's been gone on for three years, and it's probably gone on for 10 years before that. Paul, I've been involved with this for several years, uh, talking with school superintendents um, in private meetings. I was on the little subcommittee that uh, looked at this uh, association with some other people, including uh, Selectman Schneider. And the school department's attitude has always been that they make money. We make money. The reason they make money is because they never put money aside for the appreciation and for the repair of the vehicle. So now we're confronted with this issue. It's quite clear. The suggestion I have made and will continue to make is that I would like to see a definitive, rigorous, well thought out preventive maintenance program that would take the the fleet and go through it again rigorously and tell us exactly what needs to be done, what needs to be replaced, and let us then make a judgment as to whether or not we should keep an older bus or not. I would remind everybody that the town administrator made a comment last week that some of the older buses, he was surprised that some of the older buses were in very good shape. In other words, they're running well, mm -hmm. which indicates to me, or suggests to me, that there is at least the possibility that if you do good maintenance work, preventive maintenance work, that you can take an older vehicle and it will work in an appropriate way. And just one other point that would seem to be off point, but I don't think it really is there are 747s flying through the air right now. They're 30, 40 years old. The airframe is old. But they've got new electronics, they've got new engines, new interiors, and they're still flying. And the reason they're still flying is because the air companies, the United States, the Americans, the Dutchies, have made a business decision. They have said, we'll keep the airframe and we'll replace everything else. We aren't looking at that as an option, as, as I see it, and I think we should. I think the intent of saying that a plan has to be in place for April was to look at all the alternatives, including what you're recommending, and choosing whatever is the, really the best overall solution for the town. Not necessarily the cheapest, but the best overall. And the conversations that I'm referring to have been not to eliminate any particular type of plan, whether it's purchase, lease, buy, or a combination thereof, or whatever. All right, and maintenance keeps coming up over and over and over again. So your point is well okay. taken. Any other com uh, comments, Mr. Trudell? I think you were next. Um, just uh, two things. Dr. Rabinovich admitted that he had had to have a meeting with the town administrator and I believe the uh, Derek that they had had a meeting. Had transportation. Had, <coughs> sorry, had had a meeting and agreed that they needed to come up with a plan. So I believe that the administration and that the school is feeling the heat of the fact that there is a lot of reluctance, whether at the capital planning level or at the financial uh, FinCon level, to just arbitrarily rubber stamp something. And so I, I, there's pressure out there on that. Uh, the other thing is, and I, I say this, Seven buses isn't the answer, but given the number of buses that are shaky, that they've got up and that they're running, but that are shaky, I look at it as a safety issue. And, and, and every time I look at things, whether it's the chipper or whether it's this boom truck, and it's a safety issue, I have to default in terms of safety, at least me personally. Mrs. Brown. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> we've, we've heard that the, the, the uh, school's been 
their feet been kind of put to the fire to um, take care of the situation, come up with a plan. Well, if their feet weren't to the fire, when this whole fiasco blew up on them last year, how do you know they're going to come back with something now? I mean, and, 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 and I agree with my colleague as far as the, the preventive maintenance. There was no preventive maintenance. I attended a couple of those meetings. There was none. How do we know there is something now? Seven buses. I heard. I heard the uh, head of the school committee say to us, "Hey, if, you know, I could live without if I could get a plan to get them." I, I, I'd say, "Okay, give them the ninety-one thousand dollars. Go buy a new bus and come up with a plan." Uh, go back again. The the decision that we came up with based was either the the school. In the town, would look at an operational lease, which means finding the whole process out, or the school in the town running a, a bus system. How they run that bus system and how they do the thing is that's part of their plan. Those are the two choices. I mean, it's taken a long time to get us to the point where they consider both of those options. It's never been there before. The the buses are part of, I believe, the non-net spending. It's on the town side, mm -hmm. so. It, it's basically, you know, the town is the one that has to basically go ahead and say what we're going to do. The school that says they need certain buses. The school department doesn't buy the buses. Uh, you have, again, if you put this committee together, if everybody follows the recommendations of the FinCon and the meeting, and you have two members, two members, plus one in the middle there, basically, five members, you're going to get some kind of decision made because you have all the players there, but the, you, you have to have all the players involved. This article as, or this piece as written, I don't agree with, but is there going to be an amendment made to put this group together? I mean, is it going to be contingent? Because otherwise... It's, it's going to be basically something that's recommended by the FinCom or whatever, or someone's going to have to come up with it. I don't believe it can, no, it can't be done. Yeah, I don't it, think so. It cannot be done. It cannot be done. Can it cannot be done? You can't yeah. make that yeah. amendment. Yeah. Scope of the article. Yeah. Scope of the article is capital purchases. Can't be done. Um, however, I believe the Board of Selectmen in their jurisdiction could put together a committee at any point in time should they so desire. Yes. I don't know where the recommendation is going to come. It's come from the FinCom. It came with our media capital planning that we discussed, but again, it's just we would recommend it, and again, we'd go through our, our representative to the BOS, you know, here, and it would be up to the Board of Selectmen to go ahead and institute it. And I believe uh, Jeff Sweat would probably go before the school committee to get their approval as well. Sorry? Okay. I had to write an opinion on it for this in terms of buses. And what I wrote, subject to modification, of course, uh, is the opinion of the Finance Committee that seven assumable bus capital leases at this time are necessary for the safety of the continuing operation of the town school transport transportation program. However, Given the excessive costs associated with the continuing capital lease program beyond FY13, it is felt that approval of this should proceed only as an emergency measure for the current year. The committee feels that the town administrator, superintendent, chairman, board, selectman, school committee, <coughs> capital planning must formulate an approved plan by the spring town meeting for inclusion in the FY13 budget. And if not then, all further acquisitions of vehicles must cease until an equitable solution is arrived at. Now, I think that's, you, you can vote yay or nay on the buses, but I think this puts it in the town in terms of yes, Any further comments? No, what do you Saying none, all those in favor? Reporting the first uh, the buses in the saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Half the vote, no. Four three four. Four three zero. Four three zero. Well, we have a great committee there. 
During the conversation yeah. oh, yes, some other articles that we Article 15, which we have already approved in the town hall repairs, a, a particular point was made uh, at the meeting that I would think possibly the committee should be made aware of. I don't know the pro for that. I would need a motion for reconsideration. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Seven zero zero. During discussion of that article, which deals with replacing the rubber, the two rubber roofs in the town hall, <coughs> the question arose. If there was a historical preservation currently in place, it was it was evidently been requested, but it might not yet be in place. And if, and if it wasn't in place, then it would appear that we wouldn't be able to move forward with that rubber roof. Is that pretty? The question was whether or not that would conform to CPA rules to go ahead and put it, because the roof is not obviously a historic type of roof, but the roof is being done under the provision of uh, preservation and protection of, of a historic building. Uh, I believe the, com the committee actually asked me to go ahead and contact the chairman of CPC to get a ruling on that, which I've done, and uh, Angela Dunham is the chair and she's requesting from the two attorneys, the town attorney and theirs, to just to get an answer on that, because she has asked for that before. Uh, again, the question is that when CPC went ahead and did the slate roof, obviously they didn't have the historical preservation restriction in place, but it was part of the article. You know, this one here doesn't have it as part of the article or anything, so it's just, it's a technicality. I just want to make sure it's correct. I don't understand what the issue is. Well, if there's no historic, sorry, Chairman. Yes. Sorry. Yes, sir, the if there's not a historic preservation in place, then the building isn't considered a historic building, and therefore, under CPA programs, putting a rubber roof on a building doesn't fall under the guidelines. It's not a historic. It's not a historic roof. Even if there's already a historic preservation in, I mean, it's, there is it not. was voted. It was voted. So it's in whatever you want to call it, limbo, it was started because it was voted, but it's not finalized. No. It's not on the deed and it's not in the first. It's not but they haven't finished writing. They haven't finished doing it yet. Still. So what you guys are telling me is that additional expenses under CPA would not be allowed? Is that what I'm hearing? That's what they're saying. That's Possibly. what they're saying? Possibly. 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 But we don't know that for sure? No, but again. It doesn't change my vote. Well, I seem to recall back several years ago, we were just kind of that CPC funds were used there for what was considered to be maintenance. And the Supreme Judicial Court said, no, you cannot use the money for that purpose. And uh, this, because I think about it, sounds more like maintenance than historic renovation. And that would be the issue. We had a meeting with the state officials tonight, the same night that we had a meeting as well. The issue came up again, and there is a precedent to using it to preserve, you know, to protect rather, right, whether it was a clear interior to be historic. So, but then we come to this technicality. To Bonnie's point, I feel that even if we approve it, if it is not historically under the preservation, then they can't spend the money. Right. Right. Just because we approve it doesn't mean that yeah. even because they say they want to do it, yeah. if it doesn't be, then the money just comes back in the spring like it usually does from the uh, number. There are articles where we find down the road that there's a problem. So I don't know that we would need to change our vote. Mr. Uh, Chair, as far as what our final vote was, so Mr. Chair, person. The only purpose that I brought this point to you was so that you were aware of it before town meeting. But to his point, if it's 
not allowed, then it can't go forward. But I really felt the committee, since we had voted on it, needed to have a little, a little more clarification so we could muddle the water some more. Well, I think we could also address it in our explanation that there might be a little bit of a problem. Uh, Mr. Again, uh, the committee voted favorable on this particular item. It just wanted to bring out the point that it might be a question, just again, so we did due diligence on what we looked at to make sure that it followed, followed the rules. That's the only reason it came out as a question, because we couldn't answer it. Well, uh, two, two comments. One is, well, one of the reasons I was actually um, in favor of a uh, historic preservation on the town hall was the fact that it gave us a different outlet um, to get these things done, okay? That we were using our own money, CPC money, to do something we needed to get done. So that's my one comment. The other thing is, so in the, that doesn't change my vote. I still think it's a great a use of CPA funds. Um, but my other thing is, if the, if the historic preservation has not gone through, then we really need to find out why, okay? Because that certainly stalls a lot of other wonderful improvements that could be done over there that we could use our CPA money to get done. So that's that's just a follow-up with, you know, somebody needs to answer for why this isn't finished. Um, my understanding, and it has been with the CPC in the past, that um, they, um, they weren't able to complete the process, and it got put aside. Mm, no. Mm. Well, somebody needs to come and answer that. Mm. Moving it forward. Well, I'm just. They got any other comments or down. I have a very close relationship with the person who wrote the wrote for this article. And one of the things, and maybe I just read it wrong, was allowable expenditures under that, under the this thing. And money can be taken. I think it was B, the acquisition, preservation, rehabilitation, and restoration of historical resources. And I believe it's covered as a historical resource. And so what you're saying is that just because it's a rubber roof, that may not qualify it yeah. because yeah. it's not restoring it, but it's preserving it. Yes, that's where that's that only came, that came up because. Well, sorry, through the chairman. Yeah. That came up because uh, a person who works, not part of the CPA, but is an independent firm out of Boston, came and did a presentation. During the presentation, he explained that maintenance items, which I always told we couldn't do, and to Dick's reference, Dick's reference actually was to a playground or something that Newton did. It wasn't maintenance. It was a playground that they spent the money on that came back. Uh, that maintenance actually was an allowable expense for the CPA program which we were all surprised at because we've been told for a long time you couldn't do that. And he also explained that if you have a building that's a historic building and you have, it uh, wasn't a roof, you do something which really isn't historic, but you're doing this repair in order to preserve the building, it is an acceptable use of CPA yeah. funding. Up until, up until two months ago, as far as the town was concerned, that wasn't something possible. This article was written because of, oh. on that basis. Oh, okay. This was just newly informed. Okay. Well, we we I need a motion for to need a motion for favorable action in Article Fifteen. Motion for favorable action. A second, Mr. McDonald. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, article 11, just for, uh, article 11, just for uh, clarification, in, in the Article 11 you have actual capital item of a vehicle, and the Capital Planning Committee voted favorable to support that. It was in our list, they're using their own, as I said, they're using their own harbor funds, so that was a capital item as well. You did, but I'm just, I'm just letting you know what we did. Because we, we, Oh, sorry. And uh, the water pollution control facility, again, we were in favor of that with the idea that it was going to come out of somehow out of the enterprise fund to pay for it. And we, did, and we didn't really vote on the repairs to the way and through library because we were under the impression they were going to pull that. That particular thing there, when they came before us, we asked them to come up with a full plan for the full facility. 
and to come back so we could come forth at Springtown meeting with an actual you know, plan to take care of all the repairs and the causes of, of the repairs. Um, we're going on that. That's it. understand the process of what you have to go through when you're dealing with historic restrictions and conservation restrictions. You're done in conjunction with a partnership with the state and oftentimes it's legal questions that go back and forth in legal language because it's the state attorney general's office or I'm not sure what historic preservation, if something comes up in the future, it's the state that has to defend the suit. So there, it's an enormous amount of work that it takes to get these restrictions done. It's not a simple process, it's a lengthy process. Mm -hmm. And if you're at all interested tomorrow night, I understand that the Wayham Land Trust is putting together a presentation. And it might be helpful for everyone to attend to understand how that process works. I know in my past dealings with conservation restrictions, sometimes it takes as much as three years mm -hmm. to go back and forth with the language because you're dealing with the state attorney general's office who has to approve the language and it's a matter of agreeing on language and making sure that you get the terminology correct. So it is a long process to go through. I mean, I wouldn't be so quick to jump on boards or committees of commissions and say, oh, gee, how come it's not done? I'm it not jumping on anybody's. No, no, it, 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 I understand it, 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 that. I respect it, that. It takes um, a long while. But they need to do their due diligence too, okay? So why come forward with another article that you know is going to be judged? Okay, if they hadn't finished that particular item, then why present something else to spend money? That's my point. Okay, I'm not keeping track of them, but they bring me another article, and I'm just ass assuming that everything is okay with that. So I'm, you know, <laughs> they need to follow through, is all I'm saying. As a quick answer, Bonnie, we're getting out of control. Go ahead. Just quickly. They came through with an article uh, basically because they felt that it was okay to go through. The question came up with the capital planning. We asked the question back to them and they didn't have an answer. So they didn't realize it could be a question. Mm -hmm. So it came as a surprise. The other part that was clear is trying to explain besides the long process and the expense of anywhere from three to $10,000 to actually write a historic preservation restriction is you have to find someone to hold the restriction and, and the community. CPC has had great difficulties finding independent companies about town agencies separate to actually get hold of them. And that's the that's Understandable. Swiss speech is one that's never. I don't even mention that to me, please. I know. That's, <laughs> well, that's, that's what it is. It's, 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 Sorry. It's, 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 it's time grows late at 945, oh, yeah. and I'm uh, hoping that we don't have to ask to extend the committee meeting past 10. We also have, have a vote on Article 17. The question came up previously. This is one that relates to um, the Community Events Committee. The question came up at one point as to there's no dollar amount, but in fact the dollar amount is calculated, right? And I think as written, it very specifically would come to a number. All right, and that number, since that number is, is uh, part of the legislation, there's really no option to spend anything other than that number. So I think we can vote on that particular article, mm -hmm. unless someone feels that we can. I mean, it would be nice to know the number, but there's really no requirement because it's, it's fixed by law. I move favorable action, Article 17. I have a motion. Second. And I have a second. Any discussion? All of those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Article 18 has to do with risk removal regulations. Mr. Trudell, I am going to hand you the gavel because I have to recoup myself. Shucks, I was just going to make that motion. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you better not adjourn the meeting because we have to talk about it. I mean, we have to talk about uh, Article, the Article 18 deals with earth removal uh, regulations and presented by Mr. 
Shevitz. 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 more on. What is the committee's favor? I'll take a motion. I move for favorable action for discussion only. Do I have second. a second? I have a second by Mr. Camaro. All right. Discussion is open. Pardon me? Discussion is open. I, 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 I'll recognize. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll recognize Mr. Thomas, but I'll recognize Mr. Camaro. Um, I'm not in favor of this because I, I, I think that the way it's written, it contradicts itself. And if you read further into it, um, there's a lot more clarification. And I just feel that it's just wrong. I mean, the, the water, the aquifer, the, the water is uh, four feet, and they want to go 10 feet. And it, it just contradicts one another. It's not a clear article, and it shouldn't it shouldn't be passed by any means. Before I recognize Mr. Camaro, has anybody seen the letter from the Wareham Water District? I have a copy. Oh, I haven't seen that. Uh, would Would you be in that oh, if, if, if I uh, I don't think I have it with me though. <laughs> okay. Oops. I had it with me, but I don't think I. Do you know the gist of it? The, the gist of the. We were told that the onset water department had approved mm -hmm. that, and we were waiting for Wareham. Yeah. And where, the, the, the gist oh of the letter is that the Wareham Water District feels that if the current regulations were enforced as written, that would be sufficient to deal with the issue. Mm -hmm. So I don't call that a booming endorsement that right. the petitioner thought he had. I will recognize uh, I, I actually read the letter and I had, um, I called them to explain it to me. Oh man. Basically what the letter says is the current uh, bylaws uh, as written are enough. Uh, if they're enforced properly are enough to protect our water. Yeah. But they're you know, that's I have a copy of it in my email and I what, what, what are you doing now recognize Mr. I'm sorry. sorry. There, now this I don't have a lot of so much uh, information, but I believe the gentleman who put this article in. Okay. It's political to the fact that there are people that it's trying to get out of business or not run their business properly. There's more to this than just rules and regulations for the water. Can you say any more? So that's all I'll say, okay? Absolutely. Okay, where do I start? I actually had an email exchange with uh, the Plymouth Carver Aquifier Advisory Committee. It's a real big mouthful. And, and then my question to them was after getting the, the email and the, or the letter from the Wareham Water was, uh, has the Clean Water Committee been in contact with you to, to talk about this? Because that's really what their charge is. And of course, the, I think her name was Sarah McEwen. Sarah Ewan uh, is the chairman. I, don't, I could probably pull it up on my phone, but I don't need my you know, phone. She basically says they have they've heard of the article, but no one has approached them. The other problem I have, and this may be something uh, similar, similar to uh, what I was going to bring up earlier. This is a general bylaw change. If this bylaw change was to pass, I believe it's going to conflict with a zoning bylaw because I believe the actual zoning bylaw is like 444-17. And that is a the general is going to conflict with that. Is that are you? I'm not familiar with it. You, you realize, Larry, you you're, you're, you're begin to slide. You start talking about these four dash four dash. I know my brain is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, you know, you ask me to do research. I do research. This is what I do. But I believe that's a problem that may actually be something we refer to the town council. Because I can do CPR. You know about You can't have a general bylaw conflicting with a zoning bylaw. That's not. That, okay. I, I guess. I well, well, maybe town council. Cool. So I, I don't really support this article simply because I, think I just don't, don't believe. Something about it. I I just don't believe it was. It's intended purpose. It, it's too convoluted at this point. Yeah. 
you're, you're going to cause a problem out there. I don't understand why you didn't go to the people that are charged with taking care of it. We have the best ordinances in the state of Massachusetts to protect our water. So, uh, no, I can't support it. No. But I would like to get I would like to get someone to get with I believe legal counsel on that. See whether you the problem was identified as a general bylaw conflicting with a zoning bylaw. I would like to have a, a something or someone in zoning for that matter. Do we want to vote on this? Yes. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Julie, you said not yet. I know I didn't say that. I said it was, I was trying to remember what I was talking to myself out loud. Go ahead, Dave. The, the chairman has said that he cannot. He said he was recusing himself. He was accusing himself. He has nothing to say. Okay. So it really boils down. I thought he was excusing himself to go to the bench room. Thank you. I, I, Okay. Well, that would be me in about 37 seconds. Well, well, then that makes a question. Do you really want to vote on this? Yes, yes. I, I, I do. Does the committee wish to vote on this? Yes. Time? yes. Thank you. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Hearing none. All those opposed? Aye. Okay. We have uh, 600. 600. No, 060. Oh, 060. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Delay, 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 delay. All right, Mr. Chairman, we've uh, we finished our article on 18, and I have the scores. The score was zero six. Zero. The scores are seven to nothing and three to two. I'm not going to tell you. Who's on first? Three to two. Can I help you folks out? Okay. 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 So we can move on. We're closing on that. All right, articles four through nine. All right. Uh, also, we have to take a vote on those. And basically, um, as I said earlier, without numbers, there's nothing we can really do. Uh, we don't know if you're going to be pulled. Uh, I don't think we can vote favorably. Um, I will tell you the comment that I wrote. I would recommend you put it in. But I, now we're supposed to vote on anything that financially affects the town, but without a number, how can you do it? So that's the the finance committee is against favorable action on any financial article related to labor contracts for which terms and dollar settlement have not been available for review and approval by the town meeting. An article was passed at the spring 2011 town meeting to reserve funds for potential future settlements until such time as actual agreements are made between the unions and the administration, the Finance Committee recommends leaving the spring, art spring article as written or amending it as an adjustment in the reserve is thought to be needed. Is it spring or fall? It was in the spring. It was, in okay. it was adjusted in the spring. Okay. Thank you. That's the um, best I can say I, 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 each of these articles, yep. and I would put it under each of the articles, and then just say that we did not vote for that reason. Mm -hmm. Unless okay. someone feels that we should take some kind of a vote. Okay. It doesn't prove anything. We'll you can vote. I mean, we can vote if, if you choose to abstain from voting, then you choose to abstain. You can get so crazy. I, I, I'd rather bring it up the fact that we, we don't have vote. Okay. We have no recommendations. And I'm also trying to say that they know the deadlines. Mm -hmm. On both the admin side and both yep. the union yep. side, they should have tried to make some find some way. How many years have these contracts been going on? Three Thank years? Four years? You heard what you said clearly. All right, yeah. he agrees. All right. As far as... I agree. All right. Um, so unless somebody has a motion on these articles, we'll just have to be okay. <coughs> I sent each of you, or you received tonight, a draft of what mm -hmm. everyone has done so far. Right. I, gave, I gave Kelly mine tonight, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, in, the, in the interest of expediting everything, I don't think it's a right idea to be open up what meeting if, uh, since I'm the editor in chief, if I go through and edit what needs to be edited, send it back to the individuals who read it, and then uh, just let other people take a look and see if they oh, have any questions. I like the way you tweak my work. Pardon? I like oh, the way oh. you tweaked my work. It was really good. <laughs> Unless you read that, I would like to that. I, 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 I am the final editor who writes all these. 
looking at his opinions. They've all helped me out with different drafts. And I have to reconsult with them individually as to whether they feel that uh, vision was okay. I think, uh, I'll take the changes. All right, so I'll do that in the interest of trying, rather than trying to sit here and edit each one. What I would encourage you to do, the more perfect thing would be to go through this, right, if you would each go through this and come back to me and say, I think, you know, I, I have an objection that I would like to make. And I'll put it in. I don't necessarily have to go back to everybody with that as long as it's out. I still, I guess, honest, you still only one. I need it. We have to have it. Can I get it all? When can I get it all set in one morning? All right. So I'll only tweak mine a little bit in the morning. Correct. And David, you've done all your. Okay, we did all of ours in one. Yes. So please do that. If you would, go through this. If you get back to me by tomorrow afternoon, is that possible? All right. I would be right, most appreciative. Stay up till sunrise. I do. Pardon me. Until tomorrow. Oh, I've got. Yes, I will. I will be at home. Oh, actually, I'll set it to Frank. Yeah, Frank. Remember, you can always contact me through the email for. Thanks, Rebel. Yeah, I will need. Learn how to send emails. I will need. You will need. I can do two plays. It's fine. It's just the the pin. Yes, no, I will do that. If, if, oh, you will do that. Okay, I, I, will, I will take care of that. Right. Because remember, there's also the basic motion that says that uh, as I wrote it, so yeah, <coughs> we're, uh, we're asking that it be uh, divided, the question be divided. Um, yes, Kelly. Sorry, no, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Article 2, I know that the library repairs. To be withdrawn, but, but we, we, what did we, do? we decided right. not to vote because we're not voting. Okay. Okay. We'll have a statement. Okay. Yeah, some of these are very well written. I won't point out the numbers that are well written. Uh, not yours. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, why do we have this one surrounded? They, our article 18. We do, are we not printing that in the port? Is that why are we not printing that in the port? In right. the report? Because we're only responsible for the ones that really do have the financial okay. 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 So I'm saying that I would I would say that we don't do that. I'd like to get into that. But we put the first and all the financial items. If there is a financial factor that hasn't been considered, which we discovered, which Mr. Paulson pointed out tonight, we make comment on. However, I don't think that stops us from at the actual town meeting <coughs> doing this. We can have somebody say this. This is what we have without, without printing it. Unless we have to talk probably better. Well, that decision will be made that night, I guess. Uh, okay. All that said, uh, the, also is a matter of uh, Frank's writing block. Which is the chairman's letter. Maybe I'll have a phone for his help now in the morning. Once I uh, have put that together, I'll send it out to everybody. Uh, traditionally, it's been done by the chairman. So, uh, if you have any suggestions, again, please send them to me. Okay. Uh, I don't you know. We'll take them, but I sure will read them. And they may, you never know, they may trigger something. Uh, well, I have a motion to extend and a motion to. Uh, to the motion covered. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, motion. Second. The next meeting date. Oh. Uh, uh, Mr. Trudell, when would you like to meet next? Since you probably will be the chairman. Next we feel that next Wednesday we need to meet. And, uh, We've got everything done, okay. and we've got everything going to the printers. <coughs> we're kind of in a hiatus. Uh, then the next time we'll probably have to meet is the what you have the next item on the agenda is the draw with the. Uh, we're doing that at the town hall. The, the public hearing. We should do it right that here. That would be here. Here. We should do it right here. Yeah. And as usual, we'll be able to handle the crowd. Yes. Yeah. 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 We should be Mr. Uh, Mr. White uh, taping. As long as we can, as long as we can compete with football. I, I, will, I, will, I will set up the table. So we don't need the table. Why don't you get this up to me in the next 48 hours? I'm good. I'm right, so I have So I have the weekend to work with. As I said, including the suggestions on that. Are there any, are there any critical ways on reports? I've, I've met with the chief. 
Uh, I've talked enough on Gettle for that. No one else has anything? No, for now. And so October 12th is the next one. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.